Name game.
Hi, everybody. Hello. It is I, Trooper SJP, and this is the Academic Foxhole. And I am still in professor drag because last day of classes, I had to talk to students about stuff. And, um, hi. I've got things. I've got things to share with you, to talk about. How you doing? Uh, no more classes is a very good question. More or less, no. I do have oral presentations on Wednesday. Uh, so this Wednesday, we've got oral presentations for their final projects. And that's the last class meeting I have until the next semester. But we've got final exams coming in on the sort of final papers coming in on the 21st of December. So there'll be grading and things like that. But uh, other than that, no. That was me being excited, sorry. Atomic, uh, 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 Troopers all classes, BP Phantom. Hey, Wizard Styles, we gets? Sibos. Atomic says, I may have overdone my speech on the artistic value of video games. I had five to seven minutes, I went 9.30. Atomic, come and tell you something about that. I told a personal story that had a few glassy eyes though, so I went, Atomica, I'm gonna talk to you about timing for a second, but first, however, I've got some singing to do. Also, I just need to tell you that I've got some things I want to share with you, some things that I want to share with you. I'm very excited about sharing them. That's all I want to say. Alles gut und selbst. Ja, es geht mir gut. Es geht mir gut. Ich ich muss so was muss ich machen? Essen. Muss essen. Muss auch so viel im Spiel präparieren. Das muss ich auch machen. Aber das mache ich, das tue ich so morgen oder so. Das mache ich schon. Ja, es geht schon, aber es geht mir gut, es geht, es geht mir gut. 
Uh, I was just saying that I'm doing well. I've got to prepare for a game tomorrow because we've got the gamblers second to the penultimate episode of the season. And uh, I've got to prep for that. I didn't realize it was one of those things that sort of got away from me. I was like, oh, yeah, I've got to prep for that. because I was doing all this other stuff, getting ready for the last week of classes. And so now I've got to prep for it. But I'm going to do that tomorrow. You spent five hours helping your parents set up the new computers. Uh, is that because uh, your parents need help? Of course they do. What is this? Uh, cancel. I was looking at for something for you because it was it's so impressive uh, that you can't only still speak German so well, but have also retained a Bavarian accent. Yeah, my. Also, Wizard Styles, oder Wizard Styles, sag mal, gell? Äh, ich habe ich hab meinen deutschen Bayern gelernt, so. Ich muss sagen, das, das ist. Sagen wir. Eigentlich kann ich schon so auf Hochdeutsch sprechen, oder glaube ich schon, dass ich das tun kann, aber. Ich habe hab es nicht gelernt. Also, später. Später habe ich es gelernt in der, in der Schule, also, also Universität, aber. Das war nach der Zeit, dass ich in Deutschland war, so... Du willst mal sagen, dass, dass meine zweite Muttersprache ist Bayerisch statt Deutsch. Äh, aber warte mal, lass mich, lass mich denken. Ähm ich glaube, dass ich... Ich glaube, dass ich Hochdeutsch sprechen kann, aber... Ähm weiß es nicht. Uh, komisch. Ich weiß es nicht, ob ich es wirklich machen kann, weil ich habe ich habe mein Deutsch zuerst äh, so sprachlich gelernt in Kneipen mit Bauern in Bayern und ah ja, ich muss auch sagen, dass äh, meine meine Kumpels, meine Freundinnen und sowas, äh, Freundinnen, äh, sie hatten nicht so ein starkes Bayerisch gesprochen, aber sie waren auch so Augsburger. So, ich glaube, dass sogar wenn ich wirklich Hochdeutsch sprechen will, das ist, wird immer noch ein bisschen, so ein bisschen Augsburgerisch wird drin sein. Und auch ist es so, dass ähm, es gibt Grammatik, dass man in Bayern nicht normalerweise spricht. So, das ist für mich nach ganz, nicht ganz natürlich. Muss ich auch sagen, dass ähm, meine Artikel sind ein bisschen schwach, weil meine bayerischen Kumpels haben die nicht genutzt. Äh, normalerweise. Es war alles schon nur de so, der Apfel, der Mann, äh, der Auto. Und so, ich weiß, dass ich das Auto sagen soll und, you know, solche Sachen. Aber das ist für mich ganz, nicht ganz natürlich, weil ich es nicht, ich habe es nicht ganz, das habe ich nicht gehört. So, ich kann schon mit, ich, ich kann konzentrieren und ich kann schon, äh, probieren, es ganz richtig so fancy oder so hochdeutsch äh, sprechen, aber ähm, irgendwie, ich denke, dass meine so normale Weise, so meine normal, meine äh, täglich oder so oder natürliches Deutsch ist irgendwie in der Mitte, so, weil meine, meine Kumpels waren nicht so ganz richtig bauen, die waren mehr so, die waren so Juristen und sowas, oder Jurastudenten, das war die Uni. Äh, so, ich glaube, dass wenn ich wirklich einfach nur so ganz locker bin und ähm, wenn ich nicht konzentriere, ich werde nicht richtig bauen sein, aber ich werde auch nicht richtig Hochdeutsch sein. Ich werde so eine leichte, so eine äh, bayerische, schwäbische Aussprache haben und, und ich werde irgendwie so leichte, so bayerische, schwäbische, so eine Dialekt. Aber ich weiß, dass es gibt Dinge, die, die sind so deutschlich, dass für mich einfach nur einfach normal sind. So, zum Beispiel, ich würde, ich sage, 
Normalerweise sage ich, sage ich nett. Ich sage nicht nett. Ich sage nett nicht. Ich sage, ich sage nicht nicht. Ich sage nett. Ja, das tue ich nicht. So, ich zum Beispiel, das tue ich nicht ist einfach für mich ganz normal. Ja, das tue ich nicht. Oder Gamer, Gamer, mach mal, mach mal was Interessantes. So, wenn ich so ganz normalerweise werde ich so ein bisschen bayerische, schwäbische, so direkt nur. Ich kann schon denken, aber. Ja. So ist es denn, gell? Ich werde irgendwie immer ein bisschen bayerisch sein. Im Herzen bin ich. So, sagen wir. Ähm. Ja. Äh. So now I'm gonna translate what I said a little bit. Ähm. Uh, it's, uh, so one, uh, 1,000 days of Duolingo and I understood about 20% of that. Hey, uh, Atomica, I do speak with a dialect, so it will be perhaps a little bit more difficult to get it. BP Phantom says, you say something that sounds like ABBA. Distracted me, sits up ABBA? Kron says, most of the time was sitting around waiting for files to copy from my dad's computer. Mm, because he never throws anything away. He had three copies of the same decades old backup. Yeah, 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 I get it. Uh, what I mostly got was he was more confident in his German in university and in Europe he lost it. Is it use it much? Oh no, actually, it was the opposite, Atomica. I'll get you. We're diving into the difference between Bavarian, Swabian accents and standardized German. So basically, um, I, so if you've never been in the military uh, or never been in the military overseas, when you go overseas, they very often have these like two week, one to, one to two week courses that you take right when you get there like or as soon as possible to familiar to acculturate you into the new culture so you're not embarrassing to the u.s military right so it's like these little courses that will teach you things like how to say hello goodbye one two three wo ist der bahnhof frau falke that kind of a thing uh very basic like you know where's a train station uh how do you buy this but also things like what are the customs in that country Like, I got that for both Korea and Germany because I was overseas twice. And in Korea, there are things like, do not hand people things with your left hand. That's considered rude. Hand people things with your right hand. Like, just all these kind of, like, basically a crash course of how not to be offensive in that country with a little bit of uh, language thrown in. Not a whole bunch, but enough to, like, get around. Really not much, to be honest. I think I actually still have my book for the German class. It's probably somewhere over there. Uh, Guten Abend, Rissa. And... Before I got to Germany, I knew zero German. I took Spanish in high school, and then I was in Korea, so I knew zero German. And I had that very quick head start class for like two weeks, which really honestly was nothing. Um, but what I did was I just learned German by going to bars and hanging out with Germans. Uh, well, at least I tried, but Germans like to practice their English, so I did, was not getting any German. So I tried really hard to get my friends to speak, because I basically hung out with Germans. I tried to get them to speak German with me, but they would always speak English because they wanted to practice, which did not help. So I would go to um, kind of like working class bars where the people did not speak English and then hang out there. And then I would have to basically pick up German and practice it. And so I learned my German in a lot of bars uh, with soccer players and soccer fans, and I would watch like crime shows and soap operas. So I picked up my German in Augsburg, which is the capital of Bavarian Swabia. So my the German that I learned is predominantly Bavarian Swabian. And then of course I got good enough that my German friends would speak German to me and I was dating a German and We got to the point where she was basically only speaking German to me, although she still wanted to practice her English. So I, you know, I spent a lot of time just speaking German in my day-to-day -day life. Uh, then I lived in Germany after I got out of the military and I taught English. And so I was like living functionally, just living in Germany, speaking German all the time. Uh, and the German I learned was reflected by the people around me. Now, the people that were my closest friends were mostly college students, university students. So they didn't have super thick Bavarian accents, But I did teach English people with super thick Bavarian accents, so I can get more Bavarian, but I think my baseline German is always going to have a flavor of Bavarian Swabian to it. Uh, when I left Germany and came back to the States, I did study German in the university. Uh, and so I do have some high German training afterwards, uh, right after the, after I left Germany. And I can, I was saying that I can turn up my high German more 
but it's not my natural, like my natural German, if I'm not thinking about it, it's not going to be high German. There are always going to be some Bavarianisms that are just how I speak. I can really concentrate and let it go. And also there are these challenges, right? Because I learned spoken German, uh, the Bavarians that I knew, they did, not, they did not articulate their articles, right? Because in German, you have to decline there's a lot of declension, right? So the red apple, the red apple, der roten apfel, der roten apfel, I think is what it is. The red apple, I think it's der roten, der roten apfel, the red apple. In the nominative case, I believe it's der roten apfel. Der rote, thank you, wizard. It's, it's der rote apfel, the red apple, but if it's the accusative, so like, so that's the red apple, right? The red apple is small. Der rote Apfel ist klein. Um, I love the red apple. There, the red apple is the accusative, which is the second person, right? So, uh, I love the red apple. Ich, uh, Ich liebe, that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but go with me. Ich liebe den roten Apfel. I believe is how that would go. Den roten Apfel, right? Wizard styles, den roten Apfel. The red apple. So der rote Apfel, den roten Apfel, I'm pretty sure. It's been, I'm, I could be rusty bad. Yes, right? So that's if it's, I, I love the red apple, apple. Ich liebe, it's not good, but don't worry about it. Ich, oder ich, whatever, like ich hasse, uh, den roten Apfel. Then you have the dative, which is not the direct object, but the indirect object. So I give the man the apple. There are four cases, right? So I give the man the apple. I give the man the red apple. So um, ich gebe den Mann dem roten Apfel. So it's now dem. I think it's roten there as well. Dem roten Apfel. So it's der rote Apfel, if it's accusative, uh, nominative. Den roten Apfel, if it is accusative. Dem roten Apfel, if it is dative. Pretty sure. Now, there is a fourth case, the genitive, which is uh, possession, right? Uh, the red... Uh, The apple, the man's apple, right? That was so in the in the sentence, the man's red apple. Uh, the apple there is genitive, which means that it is possessed. And in proper German, you would say der Apfel. No, no, I'm sorry. I have to, I have to do it the I have to do it the other wrong way. Well, I would have to say. Um, the, the the color of the apple, right? The apple's color, that's how you would do it. The apple's color, right? Die Farbe des Apfels. So des, uh, well, the, the, die Farbe des, is it roten? Ooh, how do you, what's the, what's your adjective in genitive? Rotes, ro rotes? Des rotes Apfels? Yeah, but there's no genitive anymore. It has been killed by the dative, says Schmelze. So here's the thing, right? So Schmelze, in Bavaria, nobody uses the genitive at all. Uh, I, I have never used it. And none of my friends have ever used it. They always use the dative. They'd say, uh, the Apple von der Mann, right? Uh, yeah, the Apple von der Mann. The Apple von der Mann. The Apple von der Mann. They'd say, the Apple of the Man. So they'd use the dative. Uh, but I think you technically you'd say the apple des manis, but I have never used it. None of my friends have ever used it in front of me. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, der Dativ ist dem Genitiv sein Tod. I was told that Northern Germans still use the dative and that like people who speak high German still use, I'm sorry, the dative, the genitive. I was told that like Northern Germans still use the genitive and people who speak high German still use the genitive, but nobody where I lived used the genitive at all. So I'm like real bad at it. 
I'm not good at it. Like I studied it years later in university, but like, uh, I'm now using incorrect German purpose. Sorry, people try to learn the language. Don't worry about it. The dative system genitive sein tot. Yeah, so that was like a thing where we didn't use the genitive. And then, um, also, by the way, people who don't speak German, that's just what the def the definite article. There are also the indefinite articles, which is a rather than the. So an apple, a red apple, you would do the same thing, but it's now different. So I think it's like a red apple in the nominative, a red apple sits on the table, or a red apple is small. You'd say ein roter Apfel ist klein. If you're going to go with the accusative, which is uh, I love a red apple. Ich liebe. That's really, it's really, you'd say ich esse gern, but just go with me here. Ich liebe einen roten Apfel, I think is what you would say there. Uh, or I give the red apple, which is now dative, would be ich. Or ich, uh, ich gebe, gebe dem an einem roten Apfel, I think is how that would be. And then like the genitive is like what? I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. So what I'm saying is that German has multiple cases, multiple different ways to decline direct and indirect articles and the adjective attached to them, right? So there's all this stuff. It's kind of, and like, there's like a little chart that I was given. I have to memorize it, but here, and it's different based on whether like the case and whether or not it's defi definite or indefinite. And ist es ist klein, aber es ist, ist es, es ist lecker. Das ist eine gute Frage, yeah? But so here's the thing, even though there's like the difference between der, der, den, dem, des. Uh, and of course I was just doing just doing the masculine, which is the apple's Name masculine, game. it's also different for feminine and also neuter because it's der Apfel oder das Buch oder die uh, Sonne, right? And all those are like, that's all different, right? So you've got three genders, you've got four uh, cases, definite and indefinite. So that's a lot you have to memorize. And I imagine if I hung out with people who articulated the language clearly all the time, I would have be better at it. But a lot of the people that I knew, rather than saying das Auto, die Sonne, uh, der Mond, they would say de, de Mond, de Sonne, de Apfel, de Mond, de Auto. So they would not go der, die, das, des, dem, den, they just say de, which, because they're Bavarian, and that makes it really hard to learn the specifics of the articles when nobody's actually pronouncing them fully. So I know it's a, it's, it is a weakness of mine. I know it's a weakness of mine and I just have to like drill it, but yeah. So I know that's one of my weaknesses. And whenever I do written German, I'm like, oh man, it's like, like I always have to double check things a lot. I What I need to do, I just need to go to the Goethe Institute and take some German classes again so I can like, practice writing and getting those things that people don't do in Bavarian spoken German much. It's a button. Hey, um, I'm going to, I've got singing to do by the way for Krellen and also Tomica and also Prax, but there's another thing that is in the German language, but they just don't do it in Bavaria. At least I don't know about y'all. If I can find this book, I have to share it with you because you'll love it. I have this book that you will love. You will find it hilarious. I should have a moment where I read this to you anyway. So in English, we have the simple past, and then we have the past perfect. So the difference between I ate and I have eaten. And in English, there is a difference between I ate and I have eaten. They don't mean the same thing. Uh, right? Yesterday, I ate four apples. This week, which is not yet over, I have eaten four apples, right? So with I have eaten, when you use the the... Uh, past, the past perfect, the time period is not yet over, right? So it's, we're still ongoing. I So far, I have eaten. I have lived here. I have lived in the Boston area for 14 years. 
I have lived here for 14 years. I lived in Los Angeles for seven. Eight, seven, seven, right? So there's a difference between I lived there or I have lived here for this amount. So there's a difference, right? Uh, Volpus, I'm no longer hungry. Uh, Trooper, that's the imperfect tense. The perfect tense is completed action and the distance uh, past I had had eaten is different than I have eaten, right? Uh, so, but the point is that in German, they do have a simple past. The Bavarians I know just never use it. So you would say, ich aß ein Apfel. No, ich aß, ich aß einen Apfel, you'd say. I ate an apple. But nobody says that in Bavaria. Nobody uses the simple past in Bavarian, in Bavaria at all. They'd always say, ich habe, ich habe eine Apfel gegessen. Oder gegessen. Ich habe, it's always ich habe. So like what we would say is like, I have eaten. They use that for everything. Mostly because I don't think the verbs change very much. Like the verbs, like the, the verb tense, if you use the simple past verb, it's like essen, but in the imperfect is gegessen, which is much easier than essen, which in the simple past becomes as. Uh, and so none of the Bavarians I knew just, they just didn't use the simple past at all, but it's in books. So that's, uh, tricky. Uh, so presidents, I eat imperfect tense. I was eating a burger. Perfect chance. I have eaten blue. Perfect. I had eaten blue. Perfect. Yeah. Sorry, for, I've played enough crusades to know that Jimmy absolutely does not have a simple past. Uh, um, so they just, there's like, there's just entire verb tenses that are in the language that were just not, entire verb tenses and cases that were just not used in the everyday speech that I learned. So I know that I always have like, that's just a bit of a tricky thing is that I don't, I'm not great with the simple past and I'm not great with the genitive because people just didn't use it. Um, ich habe jetzt Hunger, aber muss ich vor der Pade nicht essen. Uh, aber, uh, aber, uh, Ich muss, aber, uh, warte mal, aber ich vor der Party nicht essen, aber das will ich, das will ich tun, aber das kann ich nicht, das kann, ja, yeah, it would be, uh, aber ich muss, ich muss, not muss ich, ich muss, uh, aber ich muss vor der Party nicht, vor der Party nichts essen, but there's another word that's not aber. It's it's uh, there's another one. It's uh, not aber. So like also, sorry people. Uh, there are some connectors in German where you have to put the verb at the end, and some where you don't. Um, and aber you don't. So aber aber uh, ich muss. But some like. Uh, because there's because in German there's weil and there's den and weil and den are both more or less because but you have to formulate the second half of the sentence differently um ich liebe katzen weil sie ganz niedlich sind i love cats because they cute are. But then, if you were to say, then you'd say, ich liebe Katzen, denn uh, sie sind hübsch. Because, so basically, there's a lot of like, a uh, lot of little word order stuff in German. That stuff is usually not so bad, but there's just like, I've got a couple of gaps that come from having learned German through speaking it first. Yeah, my subordinate conjunctions, yep, yep. Uh, uh, Sorry, it's almost like I taught this subject. Yep. Uh, yeah. And I was a, 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 a German... A, 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 I was a dual major German-English for a while. And then I ended up... At the very last minute, I went from double major to major minor because I did not want to write two. If I could have written one final thesis project that would have but done both, then I would have done that. But they wanted me to do two different final senior theses. So I was like, I will just do one. So I turned my German major into a minor. Uh, although I actually fulfilled all the requirements for the German major except for the final senior project. Although my final senior project, which was a music project, was also uh, in German. But details, details. Anyhow. 
anyhow, so, I have things to show you. No, I have to sing first, though. Singing first. The name game. Come on, everybody. Mm -mm -mm. I said, now let's play a game. I bet you I can make a rhyme out of anybody's name. The first letter of the name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I treat her like it wasn't there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then a B on F. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On M will appear. And then I say Bo at a B. Then I say the name. Then banana fan or info. Then I say the name again with an F very plain. Then a fee, fire and a mo. Then I say the name again with an M this time. And there isn't any name that I can't rhyme. Mm, 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 mm. Krellin, 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 Bobellin, Banana, Fanta, Fofelin, Fee, Fi, Mo, Melon. Krellin. Mm, 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 mm. Praxagor, that's Mephoria. Praxagor, that's Mephoria. Praxagor, that's Mephoria. Bobaxagor, that's Mephoria. Banana fan of Fofaxagor, that's Mephoria. Fee, Fi, Mo, Maxagor, that's Mephoria. Practical that's my for ya. The name game. Prax, I didn't know you taught German in school. That's awesome. I taught English, but I did not teach German. I only taught English. So you taught German and Latin. Did you teach any other languages in uh, school? That's cool. But also Atomica gave us bits. And to thank Atomica for those bits, I'm going to sing We're in the Money as sung by Ginger Rogers from the film Gold Diggers of 1933, which means I'm going to sing it in Pig Latin. Irway and hey, the anime. Irway and hey, the anime. Irway at gale at we are way at weird wakes you to it gale young way. Irway and hey, the anime. Either I skates or any say. Old me and the eighty ocean prey, ooh ya re ooh dre, you are stay on way on re ooh. Ewe ibra eat re ed lay on slay, e of way ed bray on slay, ooh tay a day. And we and we we see the end little look at the iron the the eye, we're in the money, we're in the money. We've got a lot of what it takes to get along. Ah, so awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um I did want to tell you about a book that I have that I know is in a box somewhere, and when I find it, I will bring it out and I will share it with you. It's amazing. It's a book of English slang for German speakers. Oh, I'm sorry, American slang for German speakers. So it's a book that teaches you how to speak American slang because a lot of Germans learn British English in school. And so the whole book is all about how to say things in an American way. And it's pretty amazing. It's amazing. It says all these things about American speech. I was like, oh, that's true. That's true too. That is also true. And it's sort of phenomenal. There's a whole section on curse words, uh, but they say things, uh, they talk about reported speech. John said he was going to the office. Jane reported her in, reported uh, that she saw UFOs. And the book says that Americans rarely use reported speech properly. Instead, they will use, they will say, John was all, I'm going to the beach. Jane was like, I saw aliens. Uh, and so it just noted that we, we uh, that, Americans tend to, to, to do that instead. Anyway, the whole book is, is hilarious, and once I find it in my boxes, I will share it with you because it's pretty cool. Uh, just a fax agora. Uh, why did you translate which way to the trade station as please follow my buttocks, Mighty Python? Yes, yes. Uh, amazing, right? And so anyhow, it was, it was amazing. It was awesome. The book is hilarious. I also have a book about Bavarian, how to speak Bavarian, which is humorous, but I, I'll have to find it because it talks about American versions of words that you would not have gotten if you were, if you learned British English. It talks about the ways in which we say things and it was good. Atomica was AFK for a second. Fun language news. I'm beginning, I'm taking beginner ASL. Nice, ASL is a great language. So I have show and tell before we start. 
I wish I could do a full for real show and tell, but can I do a partial show and tell? But I'll do a full real show and tell later. You don't know what that means, but you'll find out. So I got two RPGs come in the mail. I kickstarted Lucien Khan's um, If I Were a Lich Man. If I were a lich man. Three Jewish games by Lucien Khan. I kickstarted it and has just come out. Uh, it just got it in the mail. Just I just unpacked it before uh, stream started. And If I Were a Lich Man is a trilogy of funny Jewish role-playing games about creative resistance against authoritarianism. The villains in the stories of our uh, in the stories of our oppressors become the heroes in our play. Recommended for fans of What We Do in the Shadows, Russian Doll, and Young Frankenstein. If I Were a Lich Man, summary. Um, a family of Jewish-coded liches debates about strategies for community survival against the murderous lawful good paladins, inspired by Dungeons and & Dragons and the Passover Seder. Uh, players for time, one hour, tone, tense, tragic comedy, think Fiddler on the Roof meets Waiting for Godot. Ooh. Especially fun for activist groups, debate clubs, friendly game nights, families, Hebrew school. Quote, winner of the 2020 Indie Groundbreaker Award for Most Innovative Game. That's one of the three. The second one is Same Bat Time, Same Bat Mitzvah. Summary. On the way to uh, Ruthier's Bat Mitzvah, a guest was bitten by a vampire, Bat, and is transforming into a vampire during the formal reception. Player 7 to 13, time one hour, tone goofy. Especially fun for parties, drama groups, and Hebrew school. And then the last one is Grandma's Drinking Song. Summary, a singing game. Ooh, this is gonna have to go to my little musicology class, clearly. Sorry, it's a singing game. A singing game about a matriarchal Jewish family of bootleggers during Prohibition, inspired by my family's true stories. Players four, time, two to three hours. Tone, happy, melodramatic, musical comedy. Uh, especially fun for friendly game nights, families, drama groups. Uh, and the contents have a rule book, 34 game cards, 10 scene cards, and four wooden dreidels because they use dreidels for their randomization. How cool is that? Also, there is a musical drinking game in here, which means I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to play these. You have to brush up on Slovenian profanity? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's one. And then I got a second one in the mail. Are you ready? Fight with Spirit, which is the new game uh, by Story Brewers, Brewers, who did Good Society. And this is their sports drama RPG, which is um, inspired by sports anime. A sports drama role-playing game. Fight for your passion and take your team to the top. Get ready to fight with Spirit, this collaborative tabletop role-playing game about a high school or college sports team growing up together and chasing their dreams. Face down your rivals in high-stakes knockout tournaments. Create your characters from evocative traits and explore their story through tense card-based matches. Lean into the drama. As your characters grow and change, they'll earn advantages for the match ahead. Play with your choice of sport and strive to take your team to the top. On the way, you'll explore friendships, feelings, and the fleeting nature of your time together. Easy learn and play with video guides and online play support. Includes two free expansions for other settings, playing in history and playing in fantasy. And uh, this is, again, you know, they, they I'm really excited about it because they do, they are good game designers over there at Story Brothers. They really understand mechanics quite well. So I'm very excited for this. And they're also doing some card-based stuff. So that's very exciting. And I wanted to share that with you, which means those things are on the table for later. Especially like, uh, imagine these are one shots, which means they can happen in all sorts of moments. And, you know, just gonna say it. Uh, yes. You just picked up glass, 12 sided dreidel dice that unplugged. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. I thought dreidels were supposed to be made out of clay. Yeah. Wizard Style says, oh, yeah, I felt my pledge manager for spirit about a week ago. Only two months late, or three, blue scanning. I, Wizard Styles, I have a, I similarly have a problem filling out my pledge managers way late. And sometimes I was like, wait, I think that was a year ago. I try. That reminds me of a video I saw of someone showing how an anime broke down a famous triple play and animated it, which also reminds me of a really funny wrestling clip I saw earlier this week of two female wrestlers reenacting a fight from Scary Movie 3. Hmm. 
I have one more thing to share before we go to the game. And I'm really excited about it. And I really wish that I had had time to test it out. So this is untested. I've not tested it yet. So I cannot share with you what it sounds like. But you know my big modular synth, which is right over here? And I played some played some stuff for you on it. Uh, there is a company that does these. You know, I so I don't know if I, I told you, didn't I? I did a I did a composition uh, for a concert a couple weeks ago, and I hauled this this synth down to the uh, performance hall, and I did not. You can um, disassemble this and carry it like in two different halves, but I had everything. All, I had like built all of my patches. And the thing about modular synths is that you can never get the same sound twice. If you sort of craft the sound and it sounds how you like it, the minute you turn it off or change anything, you can never get the same sound, even if you do the exact same thing because everything is so like detail oriented. Like you, you just know that the, any sound you create is a once in a lifetime sound. So I didn't want to, and I had built the sounds for it here in the apartment. And I didn't want to lose those sounds, so I did not disassemble it. I just carried it over, but it was heavy and ridiculous. Anyhow, I thought to myself, you know, hmm, let's think about it. So Black Friday, Cyber Monday, whatever, all that stuff was happening. There is a company that makes these, um, that has a special, a, kind of a new, it's not that old, a special sort of modular synth that is adorable and... It was half off from a British company. There's this company in Britain that was selling them half off, 50% off, and I'd been eyeing one for a bit. And so I bought a new modular synthesizer that will be really practical if I'm gonna be gigging out somewhere, if I'm gonna play it play at a open mic night or whatever. And I, I want, even moving would change things. I was like, it, moving does change things, but it changed them not enough to be like it was like basically I'd still basically get the calendar, the character of the sound. Sadly, when I moved it, there was a thing that I really wanted to do. I wanted to like get these frequencies so close they would start um, vibrating off of each other and would give this really cool effect. And I actually just couldn't get it live because I'd moved it and I, they were just I just couldn't get the, the frequency clash to go. So that was sad, but it's fine. They didn't know. I knew, but they didn't know. Anyhow, um, Wizard says I have plans for a fight with Spirit, but I have a bad habit of moving right when Kickstarter rewards get sent out. Wizard, I understand your life. Uh, which half, the top or the bottom? Which half of, 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 which one? Okay, so, since we're, clarify your question. So this is, I bought a new uh, analog modular synth that I got half off. Are you ready? Oh, I, I see you. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm gonna show you now. I would like to show you what it sounds like, but I haven't actually plugged it in and tested it yet, so I can't do that. Uh, but I will. Maybe I'll do that on Saturday. Maybe Saturday we'll have like a little musical break. We'll see. Are you ready? Are you ready? So, it's a lunchbox. Here's the lunchbox. Look at it. Isn't it exciting? Aren't you excited for it? So uh, it has got a sequencer. It has got like a, a plucked sound. Uh, it's got like a, a regular uh, oscillator in here. It's got like a, a filter. It's got like a reverb, a gate, some random triggers. When I say random triggers, I mean, it actually just a little module that'll trigger randomly so you can have like weird things going on. Uh, and I have it. I've not yet plugged it in. I have plugged it in, but I've not yet listened to it. So I cannot um, play it for you tonight because I don't know yet. I have to, I've got to go, like, I've got to test it out. I would love to test it out, but I w I'm going to play it for you. But, uh, I can't play it for you now because I haven't tested it out first. But I should I should show you this. Here, you'll find this interesting. I hope. So it is a, it is a modular synth. And what does that mean? What does a modular synth mean? What does that mean? Uh, it is a maze ball, right? 
It only has two HP. Mm-hmm. It's got the coolest form factor, Zanzibar, right? Uh, so here is what a so a modular synthesizer is made up of modules, right? So this module right here, this strip right there, that is the reverb module. Uh, this one is my oscillator, which makes sounds. Uh, this one also makes sounds, a different kind of sound. This one makes sounds over here. Uh, this one is my envelope generator. This one here is my sequencer. But if you notice, there are empty strips in between the modules. So this um, Eurorack synthesizers are measured by HP, which is why this is a two HP, which is not hit points. Although I can see why you'd think so. It's a horizontal something or other. So how much hor hor horizontal space you have. This lunchbox has 42 HP as a lunchbox. Uh, it has 42 slots. And this company, 2HP, creates a bunch of modules, all of which are 2HP wide. Uh, many modules are much bigger than that. Like, all of my modules on my... Uh, how, many, how many HP is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen, and a half. So, uh, somebody do math for me, would you? Somebody divide 140 by 17 and a half. 17.5. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Somebody divide 140 by 17.5. Eight? Oh, okay, eight, thank you. So most of my modules in the in my big Moog, my fake Moog, are eight HP wide, right? So these almost, some are much bigger, but most of mine are eight HP wide. So like uh, a regular, like I've got an envelope generator that's eight wide and this envelope generator is two wide this one. So, if you notice there are little screws here, right? I don't know if you can see them very well, but there are little screws there. So this lunchbox has room for 42 HP's worth of modules. This company specializes in making really little, little narrow modules, it's their thing. Uh, and I have in here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two HP modules, and then one power module, which looks like it's four. So I've got... Uh, 20 HP taken uh, full, but I've got I've got another 22 free HP, so I could buy more modules and put them in here. Uh, and each module modules that cost different amount depending on what they are and what they do and all of that. But so this uh, I could double the amount of stuff in this lunchbox and add a bunch more modules. And there's some mod so for example I've got a reverb, but I don't have a delay. I would really love a, a nice delay module. It would probably be good to get a a MIDI module. They've got a okay. They've got a sampler module, so I could get a sampler and put that in there. So like basically, I've got a bunch of different modules that you can uh, take and then build in. Like you know, you'd have to like power supply. And old school. If you're really old, so you need a soldering iron in the old school days. But now mo nowadays, you can get modules where you don't actually have to solder the circuit board yourself. Uh, you just have to actually sort of build it in. So I could expend extend like get a second oscillator so I can get more sounds out of it and layer sounds. So I could add, I could add like a, I've got what? 22. So I could probably get 11 more modules and put it in here. Uh, so I could have, so I'm gonna play with it. Hopefully, if all goes well, I'll have this up enough that on Saturday I can play this with, with you. We can play it out and see what it sounds like. We could check it out together on Saturday before our stream. Well, at the beginning of the stream, we could check it out. That's cool. But uh, this company, and actually a lot of companies make a bunch of uh, modules. And this one is so small, I'm not gonna, I wouldn't wanna put one of the modules I have, which is like eight wide in here, because it would take up too much space. But like, I could get a lot of really cool things in here. I could get like a sampler, I could get a looper, I could get like some really cool delay, I could get uh, 
a MIDI interface. I could get I could get a bunch of stuff actually. Yeah. So anyhow, I'm gonna play with this. Hopefully, I can get enough practice in before the stream on Saturday that I can play this with you, and we could we could check it out. We could I can show you what it does. But the cool thing is, is that I should be able, like if I'm gonna go and do like, go to like a, an open mic night, I could take that with me and that'll be much easier to set up than my big honking uh, Behringer, which is probably a little bit better for recording purposes. So there you go, that's what I wanted to show you. And Zanzibar, yes, they are swappable. They are absolutely swappable, 100%, 100%. Uh, yes. I would think getting a bunch more would heat up a lot. I just need to get a second power supply. Save that disco for another time. I've got an aluminum ruler from Vero. It's got uh, U's, uh, U's and HP's in the back. Oh, oh, wait. Spronlin, do you really? Excuse me for a moment. So. Folks, HP or horizontal use or vertical, but uh, I want, I'm going to find a, t I'm going to pull up a tab uh, and Saronlin, I'm going to pull up a tab and I'm going to see if I can find this ruler because that sounds amazing. Vero ruler, U and HP, let's just say Euro rack maybe, and maybe that will give me the ruler. <gasps> I'm seeing some rulers here, maybe. I don't think this is from Vero, but this looks like it's from Tindy. Well, I'll tell you what, I've got the name. Hey, uh, Saranlin, if you have a link to yours, could you drop it in the Discord? I'm gonna make you sick when I say I scored it for you scored it free from an exhibition decades ago. Now, now I'm, now I'm, you know what? I'm not even jealous. I'm happy for you. Uh, that's awesome. This Euro rack. Okay. So I just, I'm seeing a, uh, a ruler, but it's only for HP. It doesn't have use as well. And I would love to have one that had both use and also HPs. That would be awesome. You know what though? It's fine. I'll find a ruler now that I, I'm going to find one. So. I just want you to know that I'm really excited um, about taking it for a spin because I've got some secret things I got to do anyway. But if I can get myself up to speed enough to, we'll just play, right? I can maybe show you some stuff uh, to Saturday. We can just check out some mods. You know, what's really interesting to me, side note, is that modular synthesis is, so, all right, uh, hold on a second. I need to tell you also something about modular synths. I told you that I learned how to do electronic music composition on an original uh, Moog synth, right? How my street, uh, Sierra's back. Oh, nice, uh, 9.30, 9.30. Um, I learned how to compose on an original 1960s Moog. What, like, cause I went, the place that I went to school at, Mills College, is where the old San Francisco Tape Center came, ended up being at. They call itself the Contemporary Music Center, but the old San Francisco Tape Center was there. So we had an original Moog, we had an original Buchla, um, and we had Pauline Oliveros and all these really sort of like epic people come and teach us uh, how to compose uh, on tape, reel-to-reel, -reel, modular synthesizer, Maximus P, you know, all sorts of stuff. And I wanted one so bad. My whole life I was like, man, I graduated and I loved composing on it and I really wanted one, but you could not buy one. It would cost $50,000, even if you, like, you couldn't. The And there was a place that was called, uh, there was like one company called Synthesis Technology, which were making these modules, uh, but they were really expensive, right? Like this, this one here has, how many modules do I have in this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
One, two, three, four, five, six. That's 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 38. This has this uh, big fake Moog I have is 38 modules. And like modules would cost 500 to a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? So like, you know what I mean? Like you're, you might be able to get one for like 300 maybe, but like modules were like 500 bucks to a thousand bucks a pop, which meant that this thing itself, if I'm just buying the modules separately, yeah, would be like $15,000 to build one. You could make it a little bit cheaper if you constructed it yourself from the circuit boards. Like you could order from them, like the plate, the circuit board, uh, but you'd have to have like a soldering iron. You'd have to actually have like a kind of electronics workbench and then build the entire thing yourself. And then you could get it cheaper, but it's still gonna be like 10, 15 grand. And I was like, I don't have that kind of money. And that was like in 2000. And in 1997, uh, Dieter Dupfer, who's a German synth guy, created the Euro rack, Euro rack model. It was in 97. And it was like hanging out, but in the last 10 years, maybe, maybe a little bit less, people have started becoming really interested in modular synthesizers again. Now, I know people are like, why would you use a modular synthesizer? You can do everything on in a, you know, a computer program now. Like you don't even need them. Like, why would you need one of those when you could just do everything on the computer? We can do everything on the computer now. Uh, and that's how people were for a really long time. There was like, I think they were really dying actually. Well, they weren't dying, but they were so niche and they were very expensive and nobody was into them because why would you, why would you use a thing that you can't get the same sound twice, right? Like, why would you do that? Uh, that it involves like having to maybe use a soldering iron and all this stuff. Why would you do that when you could just buy a synthesizer with a keyboard attached that has all the sounds in it or just use a computer program? But in the last 10 years, maybe a little bit less, people have become really interested in modular synthesizers again. And because of the Dieter Dupfe from Germany who made the, 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 the plan, the specifications that he sort of developed free for everyone to look at, all these people now are just making modular synths. They're making little modules for synthesizers in this new style, the Eurorack. And um, they're much cheaper, right? So the, the this big massive thing that I got that would have cost me $50,000 were a Moog, I got for $1,500, right? Like such a fraction, like a fraction of, like 5% of the cost, right, basically. And so um, because people are interested in it and we have these, and some technology is cheaper. We have this new model that's much smaller, more compact. You can get into modular synthesis much cheaper than when I was running around. And I didn't know that until more recently. And I was like, oh, wait. And I was like, this thing that I've always wanted that was just way out of way out of my price range. I don't have that kind of money. Um, also, people didn't have that kind of money back then either, to be honest. Like one of the people who could afford, the people who could afford a Moog was like Emerson from Emerson, Lake and Palmer. You know what I mean? Like that kind of a thing. But anyway, point is that now they're affordable. So like I've got this little, and this little one I got was like, I got it for $400, that little little lunchbox one. And I can get like a couple new modules for like 80 bucks, a hundred bucks for a module that I don't have to solder myself. So like over time, not now, but like I could get like, oh, I've got 80 extra bucks this month. I can get a new module, put it in, expand the sound. And people are really like, and... I was looking and these things were not around before, but there are really cool people doing neat stuff with modular synthesis on um, uh, on YouTube. Very cool. Speaking of cool, do you wanna know when I can think about a shift? Do you remember the guy, uh, Andrew Huang? Those of you like Krellen, some of y'all here have been around for a long time. Remember how we were all hanging out on at Hyper RPG way back in the day, like nine, 10 years ago? So Andrew Huang was the guy who did this song um, pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. Pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. You remember the song, right? Uh, he ended up getting really into modular analog synthesis sometime after that. Uh, so somewhere, sometime in between that thing that he did when we were back there at the Hyper and now he started getting into modular analog synthesis. So he's got all these videos. He has built some massively insane, insane rack that's just like, wow. 
uh, but he's gotten really into it. And so like he's producing stuff uh, using modular synthesizers. And like you can see it's really sort of picking up again, which is good for me because now I can get things for $400 rather than $50,000. So I'm really excited about being able to get back into analog modular synthesis. But also please note, I learned both analog electronic music and also digital electronic music. I learned both of those things because we learned both Max MSP and the Moog and uh, tape. Like I actually was training in tape, right? Like we would go and take a, a reel-to-reel recorder. We would record things onto reel-to-reel tape and then we would actually take the actual tape itself. We would slice and edit the tape itself like with a little uh, wax pencil to mark where the sounds are happening on the tape and cutting the tape and splicing tape, a lot of tape splices. So I did like a bunch of that stuff. Really cool. Oh, you know what's really neat? Can I can I share this with you? I know that you don't care. Maybe you do care. I don't know. Um, hold on. Where is it? Pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. Where did I put it? I was given a gift, and that gift was a whiteboard so I could draw things and show it to you. Where did I put it? I had it right over there, so I, I had it right over here by my foot where I put the um, megaphone so I could just pull up any time I needed it so I could show you things. But I must have moved it. Ah, dang it. I'll do it with paper. I'll do it with paper. Hold on, hold on. I want to show you. Give me a moment. Those are double-sided. Oh, this one's not double-sided. Okay, I can use this. Okay. I need a pen. Yeah, Hyper was like nine years ago. Okay, so, hold on. So here is a piece of tape, magnetic tape, right? Right, right here is a piece of magnetic tape. And on that magnetic tape is a piece of music. And if you want to like cut out a line, right? If you're like, let's say you have to listen to it. And when the, there's a tape head that plays the tape and you have to note Stop the tape exactly when you get to that point you want to cut. Uh, note it, move back, make a little line so you know where to cut. And so here's the thing that you would note, right? If you do a straight cut, like that, take a straight cut, and then tape the two pieces together. You got that. But if you want to get like a, a crossfade or things like that, you don't actually cut the tape straight up and down. And if you ever use um, digital software, you're going to see things. But what these things are representing are things that you do with mag mag magnetic tape. So, for example, I would cut the tape at an angle like this. And then I would take, cut the other part of the tape at an angle. And then I would overlay them and, and tape them together so that part of the tape starts while the other part of the tape is still happening. Right? You can actually create the, the crossfade with just how you cut the tape, the actual physical magnetic tape, right? So you can cut it this way. Uh, there are different ways to cut the tape to sort of get different effects. And that's what we, that's what people did back in the day. And so a lot of the things that we, a lot of the images that we use on the computer for doing things digitally are actually just representations of an old analog way of doing things. Uh, when was my last meal? It's a good question. I'll think about it. Oh shit, I didn't realize you were around back in the hyper times. Yep. I rec I recognize familiar names here, but uh there, but sometimes I don't know how I miss that. Yeah, I was uh I was doing the um Seattle Street News, the the in character newspaper, right? Or the in world newspaper for uh corporate sins. That was my uh, uh one of the things, you know, hanging out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was Seattle Street News. I, I had a good time. We're going to talk to this guy because I think he's our, I think he's sketchy. 
also. I'm not hearing sound yet, but that might be just me. Oop, that's not what I wanted. Come back here. I don't think we have sound at the moment. I don't think it's... I think no one said anything. So that's what I think. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out the answer. I've got to think about it. Uh, I have to ponder it. Come to tell me to fuck off again? Right. I remember um, I ate... So, I'm pretty sure I ate cereal this morning. I'm pretty sure that I ate cereal this morning, that it was this morning, not yesterday, that I ate cereal. But once I finish stream, then I'm going to go and eat more food. Uh, I actually think I don't have anything new here. I need more half light and this is locked. So I'm going to have to get some half light before I can talk to him again, because I actually think he has got information for me. Just for the record. Uh, was it a, it was a, it was a Fruit Loops. As mentioned last week, this should not be a hard question. Look, I have to remember, cause I sometimes I'm like, did I eat? Cause like. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says one bottle equals 10 cents. I did eat. I'm pretty, yes, I'm pretty sure I ate cereal this morning. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Your bottles clunk into the machine. And the pretty sure. Appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. Sweet. Uh, I still don't have money to sleep, so we've got to find money somehow, but... Uh, I'm gonna talk to her again. Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. All right, fine. I just was just checking. For heaven's sakes. Uh, I don't think. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal oh. sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. I'm not going to get, I could get morale, morale, health. It's expensive. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to spend money. Uh, Fruit Loops is a, not a very good cereal. Uh, you know, it worked. I prefer uh, um, Apple Jacks, but. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. I don't need a raincoat. Uh, just checking. A colorful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles line the shop wall. Again, I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm leaving. Oh, wow. I never got super involved with in your trash breaks, but I love that show. Oh, yeah, me too. That show's great, right? Uh, Corporate Sins. Oh, man. Corporate Sins is so good. And also, so I'm supposed to go back to talk to this guy, by the way. Um, and I don't know if I should or not. I'm a little concerned. Went native on the cheap, huh? Those ballerina antics were reckless. Should have just punched him. Wrong. You did the right thing with Medjahid. The ballerina antics won you the fight. Thank you. Let's talk about our right to work. Um, I actually don't think I have anything to say to you. It, you know, if you have his address, we could always send a pizza or a grub. Uh, but I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get food. Like I, I'm gonna be eating in like two hours. It's fine. So the thing is, y'all, I don't. So here's my thinking. I have to talk to the guy, the boss guy. That is a thing that I have to do. 
I just don't know if I want to do that now, because I do have to report back to him, you know, but I don't know if I want to do that right now. stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's being reassembled piece by piece, secured and... He'd have to stop serving to pick up the food. Delivery people can never find... It's true. Delivery people can never find my place. It is really bad. It's really bad and also therefore frustrating. Hello. Loma, you called me at an opportune moment. To go for oh. The feels in your way. You can entertain me with your questions. I really love her, but uh, I don't think I have any new questions for her at the moment, but I do love her. The delivery people can never find my place. It's really bad. It's, it's not good. It's quite frustrating, to be honest. Because the address, do you know what it is? It's GPS, is what it is. Because, uh, okay. Because my Jeep, they follow the GPS and not the streets. If they followed the streets, they would get, they'd be a little bit better off. I mean, there's still always a problem with the fact that the address of this building is not particularly visible in the dark, so that's, and there's a false address that is more visible than the actual address, and none of that is good. But the thing is, they don't actually follow the streets, they follow yeah, GPS. Kind of a snow limbo, man. What's on your mind? That's it for now. I don't want to press you. Anyhow, point being that they follow the GPS and the GPS brings them to super, like a place that is not the street. Like, let's say the street is named Acme. And if you go to Acme Street, you will find my building. But they, the GPS does not take them to Acme Street. The GPS takes them to, like, the middle of nowhere. And I'm like, why? <sighs> is there a chat Blue Trooper is setting up a treat stream? No, I haven't even wanted to. Uh, even. Oh, that's for him to give me money? No, I don't... I don't want to ask him to give me money. This is, okay, so here's a problem I'm having with the game. It's not a problem, I'm, I'm not, I am not having a problem with the game. It's a problem my character is having in the game and therefore I'm having this problem. And that is, I don't want to ask these people for money because these are working people. I asked the rich lady for money because she's got money, that's fine. You know what I mean? I just don't want to ask like. Shine on these sunglasses lasts a lifetime, officer. 100% guarantee. So I just feel bad asking the working people for money because they're just working the people in this place. Below, abandoned and worthless. The sneakers triumph. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying is that I, I... You keep coming back. That's good, officer. Keep browsing those clothes. Keep saving that economy. Save the economy. That sounds off. Wait, what? Haven't you heard, officer? No. You've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash, keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy eco. Wait. This doesn't make any sense. Why exactly does the economy need saving? Look around, officer. You see all these premium goods just sitting there, not getting bought. We've got to keep the flow of goods moving. Mm. Is this really the economy we want to leave to our children? Uh, but I don't have children, I think. Too bad, officer. Kids make it all worthwhile. Without kids, who's going to be around to enjoy the economy? He points to the clothes. Don't let me stop you. Open the box and browse a little. Uh, I'm going to just leave for now. Okay, so we've talked to a lot of people. Uh, most people, as a matter of fact, I think we are. Look, we do need to talk to the, the, the union guy, but I don't want to talk to him right now. It's just not a thing I want to do. Instead, I'm going to talk to the, this guy, see what's up. And then we're going to see if we can save the, there's a bridge thing that we got to do. So it goes hello, to, it, hello. hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Uh, I don't know if there's anything I want to sell. 
No, we're gonna just go. That's it. I just want to see. I just, you know, we're going. Hey, I watched the new uh, Matt Colville video. I don't tend to watch Matt Colville, not because I'm avoiding him or have anything against him, nothing like that. I just don't tend to do it. Uh, but he has a new video about uh, addition wars and like. Close this password chat, GPT. So guess what I found out about Matt Koval? Please note, I don't know much about Matt Koval. I know that he's a- uh... With loose wires dangling out from the hole where an indicator light used to be and a mechanical lever sitting in the middle. So I have nothing against Matt Koval. I'm not avoiding Matt Koval. I just have not really followed him. I know that he's very famous and very important and he makes a lot of money on Kickstarter and I can know he's a big deal. I know that. So I do know who he is. But I didn't really know him because I didn't really watch his stuff. And he just had a video I just ha happened to see. It was about Audition Wars. And, and it's about his thinking about the newest edition of D&D. 5.5 or whatever. And it was, it was, it was, he was going through history, so that was interesting. And guess what I learned? He, full circle, everybody. He is, he was like, you know, he was talking about... Um, the difference between Arneson and Gygax and their uh, ideas about what D&D should be like. And then he said, I just had a, 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 a realization. It's like the difference between West Coast and East Coast synthesis and with, with modular synthesizers. He's like, oh, you don't really know much about it, but let me explain it. I was like, oh, I know all about the difference between East Coast and West Coast synthesis, uh, the East Coast school. How do you know? But I, we were not actually talking. I was just speaking to the video because it was a YouTube video and he didn't, he could not hear me, but I was just speaking out loud. Turns out he is a modular synthesis nerd. I did not realize this. And he talked about the difference between Buchla and Moog. Like he was, he knew his history. He knew his stuff. And I was like, and then he, he was like, and he just, he really quickly flashed uh, one of his uh, uh, modular synths. And I was like, I did not know that Coville was a modular synth kind of person. What? So that was cool. Wait, are Coastal Synthesizer Wars why there are Coastal Rap Wars? No. I was trying to figure out if I could make a, an analogy, right? Because here's the thing. I was like, well, is there any kind of parallel between the techniques and approaches between East Coast and West Coast rap and East Coast and West Coast synthesis? And I don't think so, but that would be cool if there were, cause that would be awesome. Bugala and Moog, is that like Kukla friend only? It is like, it's it's Bukla, Bukla, uh, Don Bukla and, and Robert Moog. Uh, it's like Kukla friend only, but a little different. I'm gonna pull the lever. Soon as the metal connects against the contact pins, you hear a loud clunk. Then the water lock starts moving. Everybody! He does have a stream. I didn't know that. So now, Zanzibar, now that I know that he does, I'm gonna have to find it. I have to go and like watch, because that's cool. Hey, look! We okay. did it. If we ever need to get to the coast, then this is the way. But please, contain your wanderlust for now. I don't want us to get sidetracked, not with everything that's going on. Yeah, but wanderlust. Focus on one thing. Achieve it, then the next, he thinks. That's the task chain. Is it? Woo! Wait. Thing? Jamais vu. Derealization. I have a thought complete. Jamais oh. vu. The opposite of deja vu. Not already seen, but never seen. Everything that should be familiar appears strange and new, like some half-forgotten day in your childhood. Only now. That's the feeling you've been having. Mm. And for who knows how long. You should go and ask Joyce Messier about this. What world are we in? This is a fundamental question. Should I ask her? So I'm having ethical problems. Uh, so here's the, uh, where are we? Hello, Jamavu. this is us. 
So bonuses from the thought, plus one XP for every orb clicked. All intellect learning caps are raised by one. That seems good, right? That seems good. So I'm gonna get extra XP. That's that's good. Uh, it's one, but I feel like that's that's good. So here's the thing, everybody, look. We just leveled up. We have a skill point. And I know that we need to spend our skill point on these skills so that we can unlock more things. I know we need to do that. I do understand that. It's just that I really want to learn one more thought. So we've got this, I would need to unlock uh, one of the thought boxes, but there's this one here, actual art degree. It gives us a, an actual art degree, and then we become the art cop. And there are apparently in this game different types of cops. What kind of cop are you? You could be like the brutal cop or the whatever cop or the who knows what cop or the what not, who knows what kind of boring cop, uh, but I want to be the art cop. If I'm going to have to be some kind of cop, I want to be the kind of the cop that has an art degree. So in order to do that, I have to um, unlock the actual art degree, which is a thought. And uh, I just really feel like we should do that. And uh, I want that. So I'm going to unlock. I know we need to level up our skills. I do understand, but I going to become an art cop. I just I just need you all to know it. Uh, actual art degree, I'm going to become an art cop. Just, just so you know it. It is a thing that I have to do. I have to. I have to be a police officer who gets an art degree and becomes an art critic. I, I, this is just, that's just, it is just, it just is what it is. Uh, uh, maybe not why, but sampling skirmishes. Uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Maybe I don't know. I have the sinking suspicion that Art Cop is actually the worst cop. It might be the worst cop. It might be. But you've got Superstar Cop, Apocalypse Cop, Sorry Cop, Boring Cop. They wanted me to be. Well, they wanted me to be a boring cop. But I think I'd rather be an art cop than a boring cop. Yeah. So, uh, here we are. We need to track down the gun. We need to get those boots. We need to get the armor pieces. We need to talk to Joyce. I don't know if we should go and talk to her yet when we don't have um, information on the drugs. I need to karaoke, gotta do that. Gotta get away into the secret passage. Searching for the collar. I don't wanna send the victim's body to processing yet. Got to find out about the tattoos. <sighs> Who put the clothes in the trash? Got to figure that out. Got to find my badge. I've got to find out who the lady driver is and where her lorry is. And I don't know. And it's tricky. Armored gloves. So we'll come back for the armor. Lena Morell is missing because... Uh, okay, we got to find Morel. We've got to find about Anu Anodic music. We've got to go back to Everett. I don't. I just. I don't want to tell him yet. Um, I need to paint that wall. I need a paintbrush. Uh, then I've got to prove. I've got to establish authority with Titus Hardy. I don't know how to do that yet. And then find the working class husband. Okay. Maybe just not be a cop. Well, this is why I'm getting an art history degree. I figure. You know, if I get a art history degree, it's sort of like becoming not a cop. I mean, it's an art, it's an art history cop, but I mean, I feel like it's better than the other options. It's my own form of resistance. The radio relay hums with electricity. Ooh, okay. Hey, we're walking. Maybe we'll learn the answers to our secrets over here. Hobo cop. Not a cop seems like the best kind of cop. Yeah. 
Someone's got to sketch the suspect profile. Uh, by the way, Shmoso, I've got a song for you. Ahead, decades old concrete defenses. Children play on them now. Okay. Uh, oh. By the way, I think every time we click on one of those things, we get a level up, which I feel like is pretty good. So we've got a bunch of stuff here. This looks like uh, where people live. So I feel like we should go off the more remote way first because I feel like, oh, hey, look, there are footprints. There are footprints here. What is out here? A creaking ahead, a broken axle grinding. Hey, uh, do you think this is my cop car? Uh, you can be one of those cool ones that investigates, that investigates art theft. Or yeah, um, I, I'm afraid of what I'm gonna find, but let's go and find out what we're gonna find. I'll take this. Banged up fuel canister. All right, okay. We're getting somewhere, maybe. Again, I, I have some concerns, but. A banged up motor carriage lies half submerged in the icy water, slowly sinking into the Insulindian Ocean. Only the cabin top, rear wheels, and the engine remain visible. Uh, Crow's like, art is how art is up in museums. Mm, that is true. Did you know that I learned when I took my uh, archaeological ethics class? You know uh, Angkor Wat in uh, Kampuchea in Cambodia? That amazing, uh, super old uh, temple complex, Phnom Penh? They estimate that one artifact gets stolen a day from that site and then sold through auctions uh, to private collectors and museums. One a day every day. Sounds like a job for Art Cop. Um, it must be cold and lonely down there in the icy water. Yeah. The seawater has already started to corrode the metal works. Yeah. Remember the tire tracks in Martinez? Yes. This is where they were leading. Hey, 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 this is where the tracks on the plaza were leading to. It appears to be so. The lieutenant has a peculiar look in his eyes as he inspects the wreckage. Uh, let's investigate. I agree. We should definitely investigate. The lieutenant replies, his eyes never leave the sunken vehicle. You get a sudden, sinking feeling. Stomach acid comes up as you look at the motor carriage in the deep, dark, cold water. What, what, what? Why the doom and gloom? It's just a sunken motor carriage. Some motor carriages are bound to end up in the sea. No, 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 I'm feeling bad about this. Feeling, uh, run your hand over the cold metal. What is the make of this MC? Can I see a logo? How long has it been here? Well, well, looks like Jacob Ear's journey came to a rough end here. What should we do? I'm gonna run my hand over the cold metal because I, I'm psychic. The motor carriage is properly stuck in the ice. Getting it out would require a team of specialists. Mm. Is that Axe Cops, Emo Brother? Yes. A single day in the salty seawater would ruin most vehicles, but this one looks worn even in places the salt water has. Hmm. What is the make of this uh, motor carriage? Can I see a logo? The logo is too deep in the murky water. You can't make it out, but you do see a monkfish float by. Tasty. Hey, how long has it been here? The ice hasn't closed around the vehicle yet. My guess is it's been here since last Saturday or Sunday. Hmm. The estimate is correct. The incident probably occurred on Sunday evening. Hmm. Well, 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 it looks like Jacob Ear's journey came to an abrupt end here. Your mocking tone finds no response, but the motion of the waves. Yes, yes, rub my chin, crazy recklessness. Yes, yes. crazy recklessness. I the think it has been here since last Saturday or Sunday. The lieutenant glances at me. I feel like, I feel like, they think it's mine. Uh, so what should we do? Let's wait for the low tide and see what's inside. Okay. Great idea. Then we can get the things inside. The joyrider must have left something good inside. Guns, papers, maybe a cool jacket. A joyrider jacket. 
Is anybody else getting the vibe that maybe this was my vehicle? Joyrider jacket. You feel a strange connection to this Joyrider. Maybe he's from some kind of Joyrider's district and likes blue and white racing livery, like a cop would. Mm, okay, well, how long will it take for the low tide to come in, do you think? Do you think? Do you think? An hour or two, tops. Okay. Yeah. So, if it was your vehicle, how did you get back? Uh, you don't suppose you can't tell the... Okay. I'm just saying there are a lot of feet here. Let's, let's sit on the swing and wait for the tide to recede. Why don't we do that? Let's just do that. Let's just wait. It's the morning. We've got time. As you sit down in the old rusty playground, the world around you becomes very silent. Nothing but the sound of seagulls high above in the sky, echoing like distant laughter. Ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea. It's beautifully written. Uh... Plus one art cop. Uh... Hold on. It looks very blue. Yes, yes, it does. What's your favorite blue thing? Hmm. Let me think about it. Uh, so this is a red check that cannot be retried, but I cannot change my clothing to give myself more drama. Even though I have, I could get more drama. Can I, can I, maybe I, can, do you think I can pop out, put on my dramatic clothing, and then come back in again? Probably not. All right, we're gonna try it. Spit flies from your mouth to nope. your mustache, your chest, the ground before you. No sound though. Raining heavily here, Chief. Mind keeping it down a bit? Sorry, Ty. The lieutenant must think it's rather funny. He smiles and quickly turns away. Haha, ha, very funny, so I can't whistle. Just keep at it. It will come to me. Thank you, Kim. Kim is my friend. With his lips puffed, <gasps> the lieutenant lets out a beautiful, melodic trill that puts even the insulindic thrush to shame. Aw, we're bonding. You hear the sound echo on the large body of water. Clouds race across the spring sky, and suddenly you just feel better about everything. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's way better than what you did. And that's okay. The clouds pass in the sky. And the hey, of the swing it's nice. Moves like the hour have on a timepiece. 30 minutes have passed. Snowing. Looks like this might take a while. Time to present a good topic for discussion. We're bonding with Kim. Uh, oh. So, was your dad also, you know, put your eyes? That seems insensitive. Uh, okay. Would you rather sit on an anthill for an hour or stand in a river of leeches? Well, historically, leeches have been used to prevent and even cure many ailments. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's thinking. I can do this. Let's do this. Who'd want to sit on an anthill? There are no therapeutic benefits to... Mm -hmm. Well, napalm ants, for example are used in some rites of passage rituals. Well, that's fair. Clouds on the horizon grow oh. darker and the shadow of the swing set keeps climbing. You hear the distant rumble of the city. 30 minutes pass. I I am very happy to be hanging out right now with Kim. If you decide with either the strikers or the shipping company, who would you choose? Do you think I'll ever find my gun? Let me just ask that one. Do you think I will ever find my gun? Oh, I should ask him about his politics though. If you've decided either the strikers or the shipping committee, who would you choose? Luckily, I am already a member of an independent organization, and therefore do not have to choose between a rock and a hard place. But if someone puts a gun to your head? Your voice echoes on the water, strange and out of place in the environment. 30 more minutes pass. I just became an art cop, everybody, I think. Uh, uh, hey. Let's see. Uh, we have an actual art degree. Uh, let's see. Temporary research bonus, minus one perception. I feel like that's done, right? 
uh, breakthrough imminent. That's my problem. The solution. Maybe we don't have it yet. I feel like we have it, right? We have our heart degree. Come here, art degree. What do we got? Oh, arp, arp. actual art degree. Come here, actual art degree. Give me. They're not doing it. I want to know what I get. It doesn't look like it's done yet. I feel like it's not there yet. I feel like I want it to be there, but I feel like it's not there yet. So we're going to just pop back out. Uh, is that a number? No. Can you make out the mark now? Detective, I've been able to make out the mark ever since we arrived. Oh. I find it odd that you haven't. It's a Coupri, model 40. His eyes turn to me. Bad sign. Yes. Why haven't you? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, uh... It is a simple and rugged machine, favored by working men, government offices, firefighters, animal control people, you know, those kinds of people. Squint my eyes. I'm going to say, uh, is that a number? This is my vehicle. Is that a number on the side? Yes, 41. What do you think it stands for? So this is like super my car. It's as if he knows what it stands for, but wants you to say it. It's pedagogical. Does he know something about the driver of this vehicle? <sighs> 41 is his rank in the underground street racing hierarchy. This must be Tommy 41, the morning host of FM 41. Looks like the factory made a mistake and actually called this one a Coupri 41 super factory. I hate guessing district something, a precinct something, a municipal? Yeah, no, I got it. Uh, oh, God. No. I'm sorry, Harry. I'm so sorry. 41. Precinct 41. A massive pit opens up in your stomach, and the most terrible feeling comes over you. No. Just no. Say no to this, Harry. No, we're not going to say no. It's mine. I, I drove... My car to the sea? We're, we're not, we're not going to say no. We're going to... I'm afraid so, yes. It looks like you started in front of the whirling, jumped over the canal, and then drove your vehicle in the sea right here. Okay. Uh... Maybe I was in pursuit of someone? Of whom? I don't think so. If anything, you were probably drunk. How do we get it out? Detective, we don't. A rescue operation really isn't viable at this point. So it's just gonna be there like that? I'm afraid it will have to be there like that for many years. Look at it. Parts of it might be salvageable, but overall, this machine is a write-off. I, I can still fix it. That is very unlikely. All the electrics are toast. That goes for the electromagnetic steering and brake systems as well. You'd be lucky to find one undamaged component in there. In a few months, there will be nothing but rust left of this vehicle. It'll be cheaper to buy a new one. I like this voice actor, by the way. Not cheaper. This motor carriage costs 40,000 real. But in the long run, it still makes more sense to buy a new machine than try to refurbish this. I don't have that kind of money. Let's face it. This is a substantial loss to your district's budget. I mean, my station only has four other vehicles in addition to my Kinema. This was 20% of the station's vehicular budget. They're not going to take me back after this, are they? People are more valuable than machines. Training a police officer is even more costly. He's trying to cheer me up now. The badge, the gun, now this? The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and doesn't say anything. There is also a fourth thing you've lost. Uh, a fourth thing? More precious than the gun, the badge, and the motor carriage combined. Lost forever into the deepest of seas. Okay, Inland Empire. You know what? Well, at least I can see what's in there now. I, I Feeling of... Yes, let's go take a look. Find the traffic hooligan. Yeah, okay. Uh, we're gonna... Actual 
art degree. Hey, got it. Ooh. Beautiful. Contrite, contrived, mediocre, milk toast, amateurish, infantile, cliche and gonorrhea ridden peon to conformism. I fucked me. Affront to humanity. War crime. Should literally be tried for war crimes. Resolutely shit. Lacking in imagination. Uninformed reimagining of. Lip wristed. Premature. Ill informed attempt at. Talentless fuckfest. Recidivistic chip peddler. Pedantic. Listless. Savagely boring. Just one repulsive laugh after another. Wow. Okay. Uh. Minus one to hand-eye coordination, handshake from anger, how shit it all is, conceptualization, passive heal plus one, uh, passives heal plus one morale, and give conceptualization passives heal plus one morale, and give plus 10 XP. I feel like I've got a lot of great morale. Like, I'm not so good with the physical, but I'm good with morale. But this feels to me, if you do not mind indulging me, like a beatnik poem by somebody like Allen Ginsberg. And so I'm going to read it as such. Trite, contrived, mediocre, milk toast, amateurish, infantile, cliche and gonorrhea ridden pay on to conformism. I fucked me, affront to humanity, war crime should literally be tried for war crimes, resolutely shit, lacking in imagination, uninformed reimagining of limp-wristed, premature, ill-informed attempt at talentless fuckfest, recidivistic shit peddler, pedantic, listless, savagely boring, just one repulsive laugh after another. I accept it. I'm really good at, uh... So there's a bunch of stuff here that we do not have. Thoughts, we could only get three more thoughts, but I don't know what they do. The two thoughts we've unlocked we haven't gotten yet are the apricot chewing gum scented one, which actually I do want to, I do want that one. And the precarious world, which is, I don't know what this does, but Here's the thing. I This is about my past, and I need to know it. But we don't need to know it now. So we've got uh, some stuff going on there, looks like. Great. Uh, and some clothes, also pretty great. Uh, we've got... Uh, oh, we've got this new... Uh, Fuel canister, a dented stainless steel canister for transporting story heavy fuel oil. A logo on the side has been partially stripped over years of use. The government issued red dyed fuel oil inside looks like paint. Oh, though it smells much, much worse. I can use this for paint. I just am going to need a paintbrush, which I don't yet have. Uh, I need to use that on the radio computer. I have not done that yet. We need to go and do that, by the way. We have to... Uh, Go back to that radio computer. I think that'll be useful. Uh, we might be able to sell some of this stuff, but okay. Um, we are, we have 19 points. I do no damage. I am not good at that apparently uh, at all. So that's something. Uh, but I feel like we're, yeah, we just, I'm just not good at physique. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll you know what? We'll just uh work that out, won't we? Okay. I don't know if you're nervous. I'm nervous. What's over here? A bottle drained of all its booze is frozen to the ice. I don't know what happened. It is not good, whatever it is. Oh, hey, look, it's uh, stuff. Commander's jacket and a badge. 
I got, I found my badge. Everybody, I found my badge. I found it. I found my badge. I, I found my badge. I have not found my gun, but, uh. This is it. The scene of the party. The fire pit. Cigarettes and empty bottles all evidence it. Uh, hold up. Don't you mean, like, a scene of the crime? Oh, let me just, uh, take all of that. Uh. Not as such. I'm talking about what came after the party scene. Yeah, sure does look like a lot of folks partied Looks here. Like they were here a while, judging from all the bottles. The sunken motor carriage provided them a focal point, like a goose ice hmm. sculpture or a chocolate fountain. Hey, Kim, looks like we had a couple of party goers here. Looks like it. Uh... This was some kind of theater to them, like a circus production by a great clown. Hey, let's keep moving, detective. We'll send adjust his glasses. He doesn't want to dwell on it. Because he's my pal. I mean, I think he's my pal. In my mind, he's my pal, and we're friends. Uh, that's, that's what I think. I'm going to just go with Kim as my pal. Uh, but wait. Hey, you know what we didn't do? We didn't check what we found. So, we got some things. Oops. We got a uh, RCM commander's jacket. Plus one free to score, esprit de corps, plus one visual calculus. My current jacket gives me what? Plus one esprit de corps and plus one shivers, which is knowing the neighborhood. Yeah, you know what? I've got some good stuff, right? That's that's good. So uh, I'm feeling like. Uh, wait, wait. Interact here. Oh, I look so much younger. Thick blue piece of acrylic covering a thin leaf of paper with the officer's name and rank on it. Next to the writing, you see a man staring back at you, a younger version of you, already disintegrating inside, but still presentable on the outside. Uh, let's interact with this, shall we? Badge on which you see the photo of a man, you, some seaweed is stuck to the back. Hey, I found my badge. I see something that came out of all this. Lieutenant glances at the badge in your hands. I'm going to study this badge. Encased between two durable plastic sheets is a bluish card with lines of information and a watermark in the shape of the street grid of Revachol West. You see a photo, a name, a rank, a document number, the date of issue, and in the lower right corner, your precinct. I'm gonna look at the photo. The man keeps winking at you with his green gray eyes. The photo is old, no doubt about that. I look like I have not aged well, everybody. The badge is new. You used an old photo for a new badge. Hmm. Good choice. A newer photo would look different. H how old? Eight, maybe ten years. The guy in the picture is rather good looking. He's got a nice haircut and is distinctly lacking in massive sideburns. Well, yeah, the the lack of sideburns makes him less attractive, but you know, we'll 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 just go with it. And, and he's winking. Why? What do you think? His face is already contorted by the expression, although it looks less grotesque on him than it does on you now. I feel like something bad happened. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it, and a shining water. Rissa says, okay, gotta run. Remind Trooper to eat before Sierra, please. I will. By the way, Rissa, what uh what are you are you going to play games? What are you gonna play? How's the uh, Arkham? How's it going? Tell me before you go. Name Harrier Dubois. Harrier? That's slang for Harry. So you are Harry. Evrat was half right. Probably not a lot of people know your full name. Whoever told him your Harry Dubois didn't. Hmm. Well, how do you think for it? Oh, nice. Uh uh, what kind of name is Harrier? It's a wartime name, revolutionary. 
Oh. The grandmothers give their sons during troubled times, like Undying or Boxer or Ironhide. Oh. A name like Paul. Hey. I'm gonna use that in RPGs. Okay, go, 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 go. Um. Harry Dubois, it is. Then accept it. At least to make your acquaintance, Harry Dubois. Huh. I like Kim. He's not going to call you Harry. He'll keep calling you officer when he's angry with you and detective when he's not. The badge in your hands shines as you rotate it. Catching uh, light. It's so, lines of information. Rank LTN 2JFR. So, like, I'm thinking Lieutenant something. Lieutenant double uh, wait, what's the Lieutenant double, double Euphrater? The Lieutenant is a rank above Sergeant and below Captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. Oh. I am a lieutenant. And a double Yefrator? The title of Yefrator is added to your rank when you decline a promotion to a higher rank. In your case, Captain. You have declined twice, thus your double Yefrator. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, it's interesting that they actually note that on your ID card, but you declined it twice. Twice declined? There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you in your precinct's decontage might be taken, or sometimes promoted officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. Or I just really like doing field work. And sometimes they just prefer the type of police work available to their current rank. In your case, lieutenant. That's what I imagine. Heavy duty case solving machine. So, uh, what's a decontage? Decontage is the hierarchical system employed by the Revachol citizens militia, which means counting down to two. Huh. The lowest rank is junior officer, usually teenagers. Then there are the patrol officers, then sergeants, lieutenants, and then a captain. That's basically it, except for a few kinks. What kinks? Like the band? Kinks like satellite officers and the additionally a freighter rank I already explained. Mm. The long and short of it is, you're his superior. You know what? Relax, authority. Wait, so, uh... Satellite officers? You are given the title of satellite officer if your partner is quickly promoted through the ranks and you rise with him. Oh. You don't seem to be a satellite. Well, that's interesting. I am going to avoid those two comments and just go with it. Thanks for explaining all of this. My pleasure. So, uh, let's turn back to the document. It's a small yet precious thing, expensive paper caught between thick plastic, like a fly in amber. It reads. I think I said this likely uh, last week, but uh, authority relaxes. If authority relaxes, it will cease to be authority. Well, you know, it's all right. Well, let's look at our serial. That's REV. That's Revachol. Uh, and then Jam is Jamrock 41 is a precinct, That's so... That's just the serial number. Revachol, Jamrock, precinct 41, with some numbers thrown in there for good measure. I guessed. The numbers are not there for good measure. They have an administrative purpose, one that's unfortunately been erased from your memory. So the date of issue, the 7th of, of November, 50. Four months ago. I'm guessing that's when you were promoted to the rank of Lieutenant W. Freighter. Mm. A new badge usually comes with a new rank. You seem to have been doing well then. Mm. You're pretty sure you weren't doing well, but better? Probably yes. Or, okay, so what happened? A lot can happen in four months, especially in winter. The winters are never easy on you. Of that you are sure. Mm. I think something happened. Look, I just feel like something. I need to find out about the gum. The tie feels, or my neck feels tight suddenly. I'm going to ignore my tie. Um, precinct 41? Yes, it's the designation of your precinct. 41. Like mm. mine says 57. The 57th is mostly industrial harbor. A lot of asphalt. Mm. The 41st is... He stops. Uh, what? It's a tough station to work in. You have all of Jamrock to cover. That district should have three precincts, but money is what it is. Oh. It's no wonder you are like you are, he thinks. 
But then again... But then again, it's a legendary district and a hell of a station too. It must be an honor and a curse to work with people like Price, McCoy, Berdyayeva. Wait a minute, that means you must have heard of me before. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it and a shining watermark. I'm going to put the badge away. Well, at least I found it, right? Here's the thing, though, y'all. Um, I feel like we have a thing we need to do. I haven't done it in a while, but we've got a um, this thing here, the ledger. We should interact with it. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board with the permeables drawer inside. It's barely held together by a clip, then made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Let's uh, browse the case files again. Arson, petty theft, spousal abuse, handwritten logs on dozens of investigations date back to January 51. Stamped case files, commit to paper. These are your last couple of months in Remishaw, Precinct 41, Jamrock Quarter. I'm done expecting those. You don't exactly close them so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. I'm going to read the case file. It takes about half an hour to piece one together using the system you've devised. Which one do you want? Oh, okay. Uh, the next world mural. This one is relatively easy to reconstruct. Overnight on 1202, a graffito Nay, a mural appears on an eight-story tenement overlooking Central Jamrock. The building is a sparsely inhabited ghost tower, part of a failed real estate development called Grand Couron. Krellen, what kind of cop were you? Were you were you a superstar cop? Yeah, let me know. Cause of failure, rent too high. Mm. The mural is enormous. Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are kissing. The text cut into their form reads, True love is possible only in the next world. For new people, it is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. Sweet. People call it that thing and hm. that fucking thing. Oh. It's visible for miles. In two days, the station's complaints desk gets clogged with requests to remove the bummer. Hm. You and your partner are assigned to the case. I wonder who my partner was. Of course, like, I haven't played the game, so I think I was a not a cop. Oh, so you just know spoilers, but you haven't played it. I thought you knew spoilers because you've played it. The graffito crew is easy to track down. Hmm. Only the bell letters have the literage of industrial paint to cover the surface. One of the graffito artists is rumored to be rich. They hmm. take responsibility for the execution, but not the design. The ideologue of the next world mural, as the crew calls it, remains an unknown. Wait, do I ever find out who came up with it? The case files do not show you finding the author of the design. Mm. I'll read on. The crew agrees to clean up after themselves. However, your partner, JV, is against the removal, citing public support for conservation. This leads to a debate hmm. in Precinct 41, which then spreads to the streets of Jamrock, ending in a rare plebiscite organized by you and the rest of Row 3. Oh, wow. Uh, Colonel's like, no, 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 I, I know spoilers because I actually seek out spoilers. Ah. Mm -hmm. 9,000 people subjected to the mural's message, all of Lakeside, Central Jamrock, and Villa Lobos, plus half of the eminent domain, participate in the vote. Although the case begins with what appears to be a lot of rumbling on the streets as to how juvenile and stupid the mural is, given a choice between two options. We're going to keep the mural. It's the right thing to do. A staggering 78% of voters choose to keep it. Turns out the opposition were a loud minority. And that love truly is possible in the next world for new people. And it is too late for us. I just don't want to destroy the art. Uh, uh, so the middle class already blames human nature. I like it, but can we wreak havoc on the other nation instead? I must have voted and possibly lobbied to remove that thing because I don't believe in the brush. Uh, all that remains is to wreak havoc on the middle class. Because my character, that's me. In any case, 
It appears to have been a rare case of civil activity in the quarter and hmm. agreement as well. What hmm. do you want to tackle next? Look, we have to find out these cases. I think it's important. We'll learn something important about who we are. Let's see, the square bullet hole murders. It would be very interesting to read about these, wouldn't it? Mm. I mean, there seems to be a square-shaped entry wound in the victim's forehead. She's been sitting there for weeks on her rocking chair with a square hole in her skull, staring at the wall, her mouth agape. But... That's all you got. From the half hour you spent piecing it together, all you know is... The entry wound was square-shaped. You never found the bullet. And then, another body showed up, also with a square hole in his forehead. A sequence killer? Who knows? Those pages are missing. Really? Next. My goodness! Don't worry. One day. Okay, we'll figure it out. One day, you may still catch the man with the square gun. It, it's, maybe it's not a gun, maybe it's like a... Like a... Like a... Tool? Uh, couch, the couch in an unexpected location. Maybe we should wait until we're, yeah, we'll wait. Because we'll revisit the rest of those other two later. Changed in the meanwhile. A bunch of sodden papers. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's, um, let's finish our investigation, shall we? There's a thing here that we should, uh, check out. Footprints in the snow. They lead away from the accent. It's probably me. Probably me. But uh, there are other things here we should probably investigate. Maybe we can find people who know us. There's a boat tucked away underneath the tarpaulin cover. Okay. So my thought is we go... Oh, wow. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here. And I don't know... Oh, choices. All right, we're going to... I like to be systematic. So let's go in here. Can we? What is this? Through the broken glass, dusty shelves, and a forgotten chair. Hmm. Uh, okay, let's go into this. Who lives here? Oop. Okay, this is the shelves with the chair. Let's see what there is to see. Oh, a bow tie. Oh, I love a bow tie. Oh, I love a bow tie. Oh, I'm so excited. Sorry, I'm very excited about this bow tie. You'll have to forgive me. It's a bow tie. And uh, a postcard. Okay. You see a dark red chair in the dim light of the room. All right. I suppose the dark red chair is not gonna do anything special. So I suppose we uh, head out. Uh, who doesn't strike me as a bow tie guy? But the thing is, there are some big, big, massive butterfly bow ties in the 70s. And he might like a, a super 70s bow tie, is all I'm saying. Like, he, he might be into that. Let's see what it does, shall we? It might not be interesting, but it might be. Clothes. We have a new bow tie. Plus two drama. You're sure that wearing this tie is a statement. You're not sure what kind of statement, though. Oh, look, if I gave up the... If I if I wore the bow tie, I'd have to get rid of my tie. My tie talks to me. That seems like a bad idea. We can't get rid of the tie. It's my tie. Uh, postcard. This postcard depicts a forest of smokestacks releasing fat plumes of smoke into blue, cloudless sky. The tinge of age, the color of old teeth. Gives it a sickly look. Right on the back is a single sentence repeated twice. I got out. Got out. No addressee. Hmm. We're not giving up our tie. Our tie talks to us. I mean, just saying. The underside of the boat has recently been tarred. I do not think we can hit this place unless we go around, but that's all right. Oh, quick travel unlocked. Fisherman shacks. Oh, cool. Thanks. That's nice. I believe we're going to have to... All right. Sudaram, sudaram, ram, ram. Uh, okay, well, let's... Uh, wow, there, okay. We've just hit a new whole new area, and I know we're supposed to not, like, dilly-dally. But if you guys 
forgot this place even exists. Oh, I haven't forgotten. I don't know if this is our district, though. Um, let's... What are these doing in the fish? What? What are what doing in the fish? What? Oh, boots. Franco Janarian cavalry boots. Oh, hey, we're getting stuff, everybody. These are boots. So uh, my current shoes give me plus one composure, but minus one savoir faire. And these boots are made for walking. And they would give me plus one perception. Perception's always good to have, right? And these shoes, what do they give me? They give me uh, composure. Eh, let's go with some perception, shall we? Let's get some boots going on. Boots are good. I mean, we do like our disco pants, but... Um, I actually also feel like I just learned that if you hit a, a yellow lined thing, you need to hit it twice. So if we see another yellow lined thing, we got to get there. Hi, Hi. A woman in a raincoat stands on the quay, considering an overturned boat. A sword in a scabbard hangs from her hip. Oh. Anything I can help you with? Uh... That depends. Where are we exactly? A fishing village on the seashore. This place doesn't really have a name. It's sometimes called Illisibla. What? Why? The sign on the street leading here is illegible. Has been since they built this place. Hmm. The wind rattles her earrings. So, I've got questions. First is, what's your name? The name is Lillian. People call me Netpicker. I think hmm. I have time for questions. And that was actually the second one. That is fair, as she gestures towards the fishnets. Indeed, you're always confused as to your whereabouts. It's true. Ask her about the cool sword. Helps to break the ice. Okay, uh, a nice sword. Does it come with a story? Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of a story. <laughs> hmm. It's to intimidate folks, mostly. She smiles at her own joke. I like her. Uh... You know, it is imposing. It's a regular mass-produced sword, like a shovel or an axe. Nothing fancy, just for intimidation. But why, why do you need intimidation tactics? From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men. <laughs> and believe me, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. Uh, I'm not going to ask to borrow it. I'm not gonna, I feel like uh, not every woman is a sword wielder. So uh, so where are all the men now? Some went to patch their wounds, their lesson learned. Mm -hmm. Others were more thick headed. And one of them, I ended up marrying. Hmm. Uh, where's your husband now? I'm not gonna ask what thick it, cause she's, it's banter. Gone. Uh, gone where? To the waves. The sea took him. Oh. It was a long time ago. Oh. Say no more, I'll wait for her to continue. He didn't respect the sea. Went out there, drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago, and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. <sighs> Death is nothing, no. You should have thrown yourself in the way. No, time is really the best cure for sorrow, isn't it? Uh, it's healthy to let go and move on. Got to keep the wheel spinning. Time is really the best cure for sorrow, isn't it? Cool. It's healthy to let go and move on. Got to keep the wheel spinning. Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bed sick with melancholy. It's true. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time, and went on. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about that, actually. About the ways in which some people are able to be non-functioning due to sorrow or melancholy, but other people are can't because they don't then have rent. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. She glanced at the village where two little kids are playing with what looks like rocks. This is neither a touchy 
nor a very interesting topic for her. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another, better, drunk. Ask her. Both of you could need some action. Yeah, Kim is right here. Do it! Hit on the widow! It's the right thing to do! Kim is right here! Hey, uh... Um, is that your boat? Sure is. The sun, I call her. Coated with a fresh layer of tar just yesterday. It'll take some time for it to dry, assuming the sunny days continue. Um, so... What do you do around here? Like I said, fish mostly. Mm -hmm. Sail the waves, take care of the kids, pick nets. Right now I'm tarring a little skiff. Uh, is that enough to make a living? Sometimes I also walk to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. That's a little bit ominous. Keep it professional, Nan. Don't make it sound like you're hitting on her. I'm not! This is what is called a conversation. You don't have to be guarded right now. Uh, interesting. What have you found? Wood. Pieces of glass. Every once in a while we see dead bodies. Human, animal, fish, other odd sea creatures. Mm. A mine washed ashore once. Oh. Bottles, drugs also. Lost cargo in general. Most of the time mm. it's just wood and glass. Mm. All right. Major choice moment. You only get to ask one thing. What? It would be weird to say them all. Choose wisely. I need to know about those human bodies. A mine, drugs. This place looks bad. Why don't you leave? Okay. If, oh gosh. I'm supposed to find out about the drugs, right? But ah. Uh... Okay, so I've got, okay, okay, we have to talk about this, everybody. We have to talk about this. There are two choices that seem interesting. I need to know about the human bodies, and then drugs, I need info on this, major narc. So here's the thing. For our mission, I think we should probably ask about the drugs, but I'd rather know about the human bodies. Because the human bodies are, uh... You know, they seem like a bigger deal to me. I understand that the current case we're on involves needing to find out about drugs so that we can, you know, uh... All right, I'm gonna do a poll. Uh, new poll. What do we want to... want to know? And we have either dead bodies or... Drugs. Drugs. Okay. Poll started. Because, look, basically, drugs seems like the immediate concern, the thing we need to do, but human body seems like a bigger deal. And I also note that I'm kind of at a slight impasse at the moment around the drugs, because I've asked people. The only person who's another lead, I'd have to press him really hard on his friend, and I don't feel like making him give up his friend, so that makes me feel a bit awkward. Uh, so, por que no los dos? Because I think we can, because it says we can only ask one. We only get to ask one question. And I feel like human bodies is better than drugs in terms of big, big picture. But for the actual mission we're on, I think drugs might be better than human bodies. But, but I, ah, both. And I feel like Harry would care about the bodies more than he'd care about the drugs. Because... Yeah, I think that he's he's got those cases he's interested in, the ones that got away, and I think he'd be more interested in those than he would the drugs, but we probably need to find out about the drugs for the thing. You know, so basically, I need some guidance on that one because I do not know the answer. Uh, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I feel like he cares about tough cases and important cases. I don't know, it seems like Carrie was more interested in the widow. <laughs> uh, but I try not to listen to the tie. I think it's important that the tie is there, but I try not to listen to the tie because the tie tends to give me bad advice. And so if the tie says to hit on her, then I don't think I should because the tie keeps telling me not smart things. 
questionable things. Also, this place looks bad, white, and leave. That's, that's not, that's a stupid question. That's not a good question to ask. All right, the results are coming in. Coming in. All right, let me see, view the results. Dead bodies, all right, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're going dead bodies, y'all. That's what we're doing, dead bodies. The tie can't always be wrong. I, uh, you know. Well, you're barking under the wrong tree then, officer. I have no interest in floaters. Seen enough of them in my life already. Hmm. Very unattractive bunch. Uh, the dead body was your case, right? That's what I was thinking. It might have been my case, right? Yeah. Maybe stay clear of the things reminded her of the floater she used to be married to. Just saying. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to hit on her because I have a drinking problem and I don't think that'd be great for her. So I'm looking for someone. Maybe you can help. Let's see. Who are you looking for? Oh, I'm looking for missing cryptozoologists. Uh, I think I know what these are. Care to elaborate? Uh, people who look for animals mainstream scientists deny exist. Aha, like snowmen. Snowmen, I haven't heard about those. Two old guys have been wandering around here, nose in sand, talking nonsense Ooh. about snowmen and the like. Oh, where'd they go? I don't really know. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were heading. Who hmm. else are you looking for besides snowmen? Uh, a working class husband? Yeah, I'm not really looking for that anymore. Not much into the middle class ones either. <laughs> Could do with some landed gentry, <laughs> but apparently they don't make those anymore. The husband isn't for me. I'm looking for him for his wife. Wish I could help you with that, but I haven't seen your working class husband. <laughs> Maybe I can help you find someone else. All right. She seems genuinely sorry for not being able to help you. Oh, well, that's it. I'm not looking for anyone else right now. Well, how can I assist you then, officer? Uh, I feel like we're going to go. We are not going to hit on her. Because look at this. Because Kim's presence is making it awkward. And also don't know a good... Sp yeah, no, we're just... We're going to go. The moment we're just heading out. Going to just, you know, uh, check out what's hanging out over here. Uh, I'm sad that I missed the opportunity. Did you see there was like a quick opportunity to, uh, there, there it is. Come here. There we go. The plank beneath, the planks creak beneath your weight. All right, all right. The ladder leads to a school of fish swimming in the kelp. Hey, kids. Oh, never mind. Uh, you know, it's all very, it's all very, uh, the boat is filling freely in the water. Unmoored. Okay, back from recording. How go things the disco? Has has he caught any book? He he needs some boogie shoes uh, before he can catch the boogie fever. Uh, and now, Hawkeye, I'm thinking of the song. Uh, I wanna put on. I wanna put on my 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 boogie shoes. You can't see the house from this angle. I noticed. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, I, I did notice that. It's fine. We're just going to go in the door. Or we'll try. Maybe we can't. I don't know. Locked. It's locked. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, there are things. There's a woman there. We will not talk to her yet. A wedding stone, well-worn and covered in rust. My, my, my boogie shoes. Just to be with you. Uh, let's see. Ale, white curtains have been drawn shut. No looking in. Okay. It's all right. All right. We're we, 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 we figure stuff out. Let's see. What did we have here? A cinder, cinder blocks char to makeshift fire pit with magazines for lighting. All right. There are people hanging out here. A bench. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. Okay, okay. Can we visit the bench if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone? Thank you. Um, I'm also thinking of that song, but that song makes me think of Sports Night. Velicity Huffman saying, Shoo, money. It's 
it's fair. Uh, it's fair. Oh, wait. Did you see that? There was a... Uh, uh, uh. Sounds of life in the north. A washboard scrubs filth from fabric. It's true what they say about this game, y'all. It's got some very nice writing. Oh, pants. Interestillery. I've got pants. You see dust-covered linens, dried tulips on a bed. Hmm. There's something quite melancholy about this game, don't you think? Uh, that's not bad. But I do have pants. Oh, hey, we might get a level up pretty soon, everybody. We've got some pants. Plus one to Kingdom of Conscious, moralist pants. I don't think I need moralist pants. Oh, I think these cl I think, okay, I just learned something. Plus one to indirect modes of taxation, affluent moneymaker, man. I feel like this must be your, something about your value system, right? So I feel like there might be some kind of art cop pants, maybe? Uh. Okay, so that's cool. We're gonna note it. All right, all right, all right. I think we're learning something about the, the situation. I'm going to walk this way a little bit first. See if we can find anything here. That's another zone of analysis for us. This way. The choices are very... Yeah, they really... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fezrix? Fezrix? What a pronounce your name right. Fezrix. Uh, the choices are... Very well done. The bushes are too thick and thorny to pass through. That's, that's all right. We will go around. It's, it's okay. Yeah, it, I mean, it's... Uh... Also, this apparently was their, their RPG campaign, and I was like, I would really love uh, to get a source book. We'll just take some money, because we don't have any. Construction material. Whoever planned to build this house left in a hurry. Hmm. Oh. Money gained, that's great. And a healing item gained. I've got a lot of things that will help heal my morale. Not much to help heal my physical body, which I am weak at. Let's talk to this lady. Ooh. Washerwoman. The, woman's, the woman next to a bucket of clothes hums an odd medley, melody. Her eyes are closed. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have katava. She opens her eyes. Uh, I will lean for. I'm not going to ask her how she was here, but she can smell me. Oh, welcome, police officer. Hello. We don't cause any trouble around here, and we don't want any trouble either. Okay. We're not here to cause any trouble, madame. No, what he said. Trouble? Say the second thing for a turn. Shows you got style. What he said. We're cops. We don't cause trouble. We take care of trouble. Oh, of course. Last time we saw you around here was 12 years ago. You also came to take care of trouble then. Wish you did. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I've been here before? And also you remembered. No, not you personally. Oh. I meant the RCM. Oh. Some of the men got into a fight. One of them killed another. Locked himself in that woodshed over there. She points to the building behind her. He was boarding. Needed some help opening the door. You got it open for him and took him to think about what he'd done in a more secluded place. Somewhere more quiet. Hmm. She says it as if he was on some kind of spiritual retreat. I'm doing very well with my morale. Uh, what what kind of a uh, in ill omen are we talking about? Oh, the usual dark tidings, black hound. I really like the voice acting because there's a kind of an awkwardness to this woman's voice, which I feel is very uh, naturalistic. That's you, all right, a black hound licking your own hula hoop. Well. If I'm a, considered an ill omen, why hasn't anyone told me that? Maybe they are afraid. Why? Because you're an ill omen. Yes. But you're still welcome here, as long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then, 
<laughs> because that's the kind of fishing village we build. I like her. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park the motor carriage and not a lot of houses or a lot of people. My kids are long gone searching for treasure. Mm. So are others. Mm. Ah, look at me ramble. Oh, it's okay. It's what okay. What brings you to us? Uh, oh, hey. Maybe I could stay in a place that does not involve paying 20 real all the time. Uh, where could someone stay around here? Stay? Most people here are trying to leave. I know, but, you know. That said, if lodgings is what you're looking for, <gasps> I've got a free room in the shack. Oh, uh, how much is it? I won't charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. What? Everybody. Uh. Uh. Wait, hold on. You're just giving it to me? No one is using it, and God knows it's not much anyway. You can stay there. Uh. You know what? Okay. I'll take it. Wait. Yes. 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 Look, my liver is dying. And uh I feel like yes, yeah, right, yeah. I'm just I'm gonna just I'm just gonna take it. I hope Kim's okay. I'm gonna just yeah, yes, sure. Don't make an old woman regret opening her house to the fleet. A key appears from under her apron. She hands it to you. Yeah, I hope I hope yeah. Let's not yeah, okay. Let's just not make her regret anything. Harry. Well, if you are not in the hostel in the morning, I know where to find you. Here, in a shack. Yeah. He's a little relieved you're no longer in that room. Maybe me too, huh? <laughs> Your liver deserves it. It knows what it did, says Krellen. This environment encourages one thing, and one thing only. Drinking. Uh, we can... We're working on it. Finally, you have those lamos of Martinez off your back, Bratan. This looks like a great place to bring chicks. Nick Ty, I'm talking to this woman right now. So, uh, what is in this uh, fishing village? Just us. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. She sounds tired. Uh, what do you mean? This is pretty much a non place. She grins. A blank spot on the map. Just a cluster of nameless shacks on a nameless street. Hmm. The place is so pornographically poor, it's not even funny. Hey, I just leveled up, everybody. And now I have a place to bring the widow. Uh, this place is pornographically poor. I'm not going to say that to the widow. Uh, oh, sorry, to the old lady. There's got to be something here. Tell me, who else lives in this village? Is there a way to make a little money around here? All right. Uh, who else lives in this village? Well, there's Lillian and her kids. Mm -hmm. A few new folk live in the house to the east, but they are away hmm. right now. Hmm. And then there's the drive. Not a pretty sight, but there's little we can do about it. Home is home, even for them. Well, I met Lillian already. Lillian is tough. Mm -hmm. Tougher than the men here, at least. If it wasn't for her and the kids, this place wouldn't have a spark of life left. Hmm. I haven't seen any drunks yet, though. Sooner or later, you'll see for yourself. She slowly, she slowly shakes her head. Long to find these guys. Okay. Uh, there's got to be something here. Tell me. Over there, you can find more of the same. Sharks and trees growing wild. That's the pot. The pox? What's that? An old military hospital, and it's surrounded. Hmm. Or it used to be, during the time of the suzerain. She looks towards the buildings to the south. After the war, it was turned into a goodwill hospital for shell shock veterans and folks looking for some quiet in the old sanatorium garden. Hmm. Now the area is crisscrossed with nameless streets and makeshift cinder block houses. Shacks as far as the eye can see. Hmm. What happened to the hospital? The goodwill ran out. The staff left, and the place was shut down. 
it is hmm. long gone by now. She tightens the scarf around her neck. Uh, is there a way to make a little money around here? I don't know if I should ask, but I'm going to ask. Here for yeah. you, no officer. The only money we have here is some coins the drunks try hiding from their women <laughs> and then forgot about. Oh, that's fair. Under carts, boats, in little boxes, it's not hard to find. All right, well, there's another topic I'd like to address. I'm not going to say, we're not going to be rude. She nods, rinsing another piece of cloth. Uh, what's further down the coast? Not much. There's the abandoned church, the Dolorean Church of Humanity. It's been there since before my time, even. Why was it abandoned? Some things just don't fly, officer. Look around. Who'd go to church here? Fair. They built it 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. She smiles, a gap-toothed smile, and smells the air. So, they don't hold services there anymore? The ecclesiastics? No, they've tried, but things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open. It's a pity. It used to be such a nice church. Ooh, accidents. She's hmm. not telling you all she knows. Keep her talking. Uh, I've got the feeling you're leaving stuff out. What else is going on? Well, there's that music. Music from across the sea. Oh. It started a few days ago, and now it's blasting, even through the night. Is it an anodyne music? And now, suspicious-looking people are sneaking around the church. I don't like that. Oh. Interesting. You could look into this ruckus if you have the time. Oh, I absolutely will. Uh, what else is down coast? Before you get to the church, yeah, there's some ruins, mm -hmm. an apartment complex, or some kind of electrical plant. Hmm. Run down bunch of houses, empty. Uh, which is it? Apartments or an electrical plant? I don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. A pre-war place. It used to be something. Before she shrugs. I wasn't here then, you know. Was hmm. born in Samara. I see. Uh, anything else of note? Of note? Thank you, 30. The old fish market up on the boardwalk. But it's closed. Hmm. Well, that's it? Uh, there's got to be more along the coast. What? You're one of those real estate no. people with big plans? If you want a development opportunity... You can check out the abandoned building over at Lensen. Okay. Used to be a supply depot, mm -hmm. we think. Sending mm. goods and ammo across the bay. During the war? Jam shut though. We mm. tried to get in, see if there mm. was anything to sell or scavenge, mm. but it's impossible. Mm. And now you know everything there is to know about this coast. She drops a bar of soap into the bucket with a splash. So... Tell me about yourself, though. Uh, who exactly are you here? Me? Yeah. No one. Just an old washerwoman. Mother called me Isabel, if that's mm. what you're asking. And my married name is Sadie. Hmm. Now it's your turn, Mr. Uh, Lieutenant Double Yefreiter Harrier Dubois. Quite a handle you got there. Thanks. So many titles. One of them, Double. Well, goodbye. I, I'm I'm off. I use my name. Also, apparently, I have a place to stay now, which is something, right? I mean, I've got feelings. Let's uh, look there. The street sign is illegible below the graffito. Uh, I'm gonna talk to these kids, but I'm gonna look at these. Uh, Hard to see the details. The colors, all warm and welcoming, are, are cozy, though. A flower trough. Trough. Where nothing really grows. Maybe in the spring. Okay. Oh! Oh! Well, this is really nice. There's a small child with a... Baby doll? Oh, I got a ruffed grouse taxidermy. What? I have a taxidermy. 
I don't know. Uh, look at it. It's a... Uh, the dead body of a grouse stuffed with some unknown material. From a distance, it might just pass off as the real thing. The bird itself looks extremely ruffled and slightly grumpy. Hey, it might be useful. Also, didn't we level up? We did. Everybody, we leveled up. This is important. I've got uh, 20 minutes of play, but we leveled up and we got to figure out what we're going to do here. Okay, so there have been a lot of things we need to do to level up, right? Those are things. Uh, and we've got, um, of the things we currently have in our doc docket, suggestion, physical instrument, authority, these things are very hard, rhetoric, perception, Rhetoric, conceptualization, esprit de corps, interfacing, physical instrument, electrochemistry, visual calculus, perception, interfacing. So what are the ones that we have uh, the most, uh, somebody do quick math with me. Uh, which one we want we want to do the ones that I think have the most um the most most bang for our buck interfacing what perception visual calculus that's all one a piece half uh, no not though uh electrochemistry okay physical instrument interfacing do we have two interfacings two interfacings uh Esprit de corps, conceptualization, rhetoric, perception. All of those are new, right? Uh, no, we have two, two perceptions, two interfacings. Uh, I feel like two physical instruments, maybe? Uh, two physical instruments... And then another, and then a suggestion. So we should probably do physical instrument, perception, or interfacing. So interfacing is the mysterious phone or the map wall. Okay, that's all cool, but we can maybe hold off on that. Although that's challenging and challenging, which is probably actually not bad. Perception is... The hanged man, who I think is important, that's legendary, and the cafeteria window, which, you know, and then the last one is physical instrument, the trash container, which seems important, and the ice cream maker, which is probably also important. So I think we should increase our physical instrument because uh, we're not particularly strong, you know. So let's do that. Let's, we can't. We have maxed out our physical instrument. So we can't actually make it anymore. Okay, so that left us with what? Um, oh, that's a bummer that we can't increase that because I do think it's actually quite important for us uh, to get there. Uh, I have a question. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. The ones that are um, not lit up are ones that we could actually get access to if we increase the skill. Okay, reaction speed, savoir faire. I think I need that one. Encyclopedia, conceptualization, half light. Composure. Well, I think we should take one of the ones that we should open up a thing that we have to uh, not reaction speed. The, mm, I feel like uh, we should do the half light or composure. Half light or composure. Uh, what else would be useful? Half light or composure. Let's see. 
Half Light and Composure. There is nothing else that... Well, okay, Half Light and Composure are... Uh, dang it. Conceptualization Encyclopedia Reaction Speed. Do we have anything else? Conceptualization Encyclopedia Reaction Speed. Well, I suppose we do conceptualization then. Right? Yes. Conceptualization. Yeah. Well, uh, conceptualization would get us... Yeah, that's it. We're, we're going conceptualization. I don't know if that's the best idea. I'm nervous. What will that... Okay, tell me about conceptualization. What we got here? Understand creativity, see art in the world. That seems like a good thing to do. Cool for creative, psychedelic, fanciers, and critics. Well, since we just became a, a an art cop, let's level up our conceptualization. Okay, we did it. We probably should increase our endurance at some point. Sorry. Oops. Uh, that's okay. That's all right. That's okay. That's okay. Next time. It's, it's all right. Uh, it may not be all right. Industrial coal pellets burn with an orange glow. Well, let's talk to this uh, child. Hello, mister. Hello, little Lily. A young girl, barely four or five years old, sits on the sofa. She's looking at you with frank curiosity. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. What's this? I'm going to show her the stuffed bird. It's a growl. She yelps, smiling broadly. You might be able to get on Dot's good side if you replace the broker skewer you almost certainly broke. Uh... Yes, but what's it for? I don't know. Can I have it? I know someone who really likes stuffed birds. Sure. I mean, you already took it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. Hmm. Uh, what's that thing you're holding? It's Lammy. He's my friend. Sort of. She yeah. holds the fuzzy beast up to demonstrate. Lammy is a stuffed lamb. is missing and the fur is tattered in several parts lambie looks soft yes very soft she suddenly pushes the stuffed animal towards my face press your cheek against them i'm gonna do that isn't he soft yeah she's right lambie is very soft she rubs the white fur against her cheek then returns the lamb to her lap cuddling it uh, are you lillian's daughter yes i am little lily do you know my mom uh, yes, we met earlier. That's nice. My mom is great. She's never angry or anything. Oh, I heard there was a girl here who has armored gloves. Is that you? Oh, I had gloves. Very big ones. Heavy, too. What happened to them? Get these gloves. Found them when Lemmy and I were playing hide and seek. In an empty house. Where no one lives. I think someone hid them there. Yeah. She doesn't want you to think she stole them. Well, and, and where are the gloves now? I hid them. The twins were going to take them. They're stupid. Okay. She lifts her stuffed toy up and looks into its one remaining eye as though searching for confirmation. You're going to need those gloves. It's for important police business. He enunciates the last two words carefully. Oh. She doesn't seem to understand, but the lieutenant's tone has conveyed to her the important part. There castle behind our house under the sand you can break the castle it's not very good she points somewhere outside okay well goodbye Bye. the girl's large curious eyes remain fixed on you she seems like a nice sort you know um i was having a thought this is a computer rpg right i was talking to we were talking to simon about it Kicks a stone. He can't be more than five years old. It doesn't seem like your average RPG, right? Like, it, I mean, it is in the sense that you travel, you get quests and side quests and all of that, and you have to make choices. But it has a different vibe than most RPGs that I've played, computer RPGs. The other one. I like it. Indistinguishable from him. He watches his brother kick the stone with his tongue lolling out of his mouth. 
You must be Lillian's twins. This one doesn't say anything. Kicking the concrete with his worn out sneaker. It's raining. Lily's our mom. Explains the other one, tongue still lolling out of his mouth. I already said that. The stone kicker laughs suddenly. His head is too large for his shoulders. The other one laughs as well. <laughs> wow, so intellectually stimulating. These are five-year-olds. Come on, relax. Stone kicking isn't even of very high caliber. Anyone can do that. <sighs> Is little Lily your sister? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. You guys look identical. The stone kicking one becomes frantic all of a sudden, as if that's something to be scared of. The obvious fact that you just stated. He looks just like me. The other one says, yeah, I said that. The boy doesn't answer. His brother throws another rock. Both of their hair is covered in some kind of dirt. Okay. The rock kicker was just being shy. I see. Now he's enthusiastic again. Your dad was big. <laughs> the lieutenant remarks with evident glee. Ah... Uh, and what are you, Kidmaster General? Maybe I am. Oh, no, he grins. How about some actual police work? We are not getting anything here. Okay, well, bye, kids. Take mm -hmm. care. You know, look at that. I was, at, you know, we had a very nice moment, the kids and I. Uh, oh, take a bottle. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, oh, I think these are the drunks. Mid -step and put your hand on the garish necktie. Thank you, 15. I don't, I really don't care about any bottle. I don't want to look at it. You should care. Nope. I'm getting a very special buy from that bottle. Please go talk to him. I need to look at it closer. I do not want to encourage alcoholism in my person. We're going to try to avoid all of that, you know, because we got some issues happening. Let's uh, find out what's going on with our drunk friends. Grumbles an unshaven man with a ruddy nose. He narrows his eyes at you as if in recognition, then turns his head away. The noxious odor emanating from the drunken man is strong and familiar. We're going to work on this. Who is Abigail? He draws out a disgusting snort, then mumbles, waving a finger in my general direction. Abigail is his wife or girlfriend. Yeah. Chances are she's gone. Calling her wouldn't make it any better or worse. Yeah, You're probably. Not going to get anything out of this guy. He's too drunk. Yeah. Uh, who are you? What's your name? Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, tell me about your friends. His voice trembles with every word, becoming even weaker. He whimpers in the end. Okay, so, but why shouldn't I call Abigail? He snorts and beckons you to lean in closer. Oh, okay, I'll lean in. Don't call Abigail. Don't call Abigail. His breath smells like a toxic swamp as he whispers to you, then waves his hands to shooing you away. Well, all right, we're going to go. Uh, okay. He whimpers softly, his voice trailing off into nothingness. Let's talk to his perhaps less drunk friends. Look, everybody, I've been so productive. Hey, tequila. Uh, idiot Doom Spiral, this one's name. A 30-something man clad in a two-piece Lycra TM tracksuit puts down his pilsner and extends his hand in greeting. Good to see you. How's I will. business? How's the whole reality situation treating you? I will shake his hand. So what's happening? Wait. Tequila? Yeah. Tequila Sunset. How are the um, 
High-concept, reality-based adventures proceeding. Uh, he says it like it's obviously your name. Like you call someone Billy Brunel or leader of the 4th Street Gang. Good. These people know your true name. Stop it! Looks like it has preceded you, Mr. Sunset. More on that later. Uh, you know, Inland Empire will talk later. I like this guy. You should too. He respects you by calling you your true name. Y'all. Um... Not to a 50 year losing streak, no. Reality, it makes me aggressively sad, maybe. Don't know, people tell me I'm a cop. I'm getting used to that. Let's go with the more neutral. It's good to hear that you're on top of things. Talking about used to, did you know that I used to be a real mover and shaker? He thoughtfully picks at his shit stained Lycra TM jacket. Sadly, things aren't going that well in Idiot Doom Spiral Land. Ten minutes. Haven't found those keys yet. Haven't won that great piece of ass back. No word from my business buddy. He takes a sip from his beer. Krellen notes, ten minutes. Uh, might be a good idea to save after this conversation and start your outro. Yeah, 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 I think so. Because you'll still need to eat or wrestle with Rick Ventures. This is also true. This yes. guy's your buddy, buddy. You feel it immediately. You belong to an organization. A fraternity of drunks. We're trying to work with our friend here. It did do spy. This is bound to be a good, high-concept conversation, at last. By the way, I've got so much mech. I can heal my morale, and I also have a lot of morale, but I, I need more physical health stuff. Let's see. Uh, what do you guys do around here? We are saving the world. He looks at his comrades. Please. Please don't go. I know. Don't go. Yeah, yeah, I know, begs the man in the pipe. I got it. Don't call her. Okay, we're we're drinking alcohol. That's yep. what we're doing. Yep. I tried to save the world once, a long time ago, with enterprise, creativity, and willpower. But that didn't work out. Uh, I feel like there's a message so here. Now, it's a pirate's life for me. Okay, well, what is a, a tequila sunset? You keep saying it, because I know it's tequila sunrise. It's you. Your tequila sunset. How, how do you know this? We've met before. Don't you remember? Maybe? Maybe. You look like you want to know how Tequila Sunset came to be. You look like you want to hear the tale. Okay, go ahead. Tequila. Tequila Sunset. Something ominous there. For some reason, the name fills you with the No, you have to know. No, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Let me take a sip to moisten up my cords. Tequila Sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday. And by Tequila Sunset, I mean you. The man, the myth. Uh, was I alone? Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. Sorry. He takes another sip, then continues. You got here on Friday to solve a case. Hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz. Because as far as I know, all you did was get piss drunk. Rude, go on. Word on the street is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer. And that it would be really fucked up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of them. That's pretty high concept if you ask me. Yeah. It is. It is. Got some concerns, go on. The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as he can. What happened then? It was a late Saturday night when we, the Union of Moribund Alcoholics, were getting yeah. our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this. We get our drink on 24-7. Healthy? It makes everything warm and glowy. I trust you know the feeling. My liver does, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yes you do, Bratushka! The only thing better than that is putting the pedal to the metal after you kiss the tie. And off we go. I'm not list I'm wearing you, but I'm not listening to you. One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs. Yeah. Do you remember the sound of wood cracking? The billboard. 
Maybe? Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's just the reality we're in. Naturally. Anyway, there was a brief silence. A gasp of silence, if you will. I like your drawing. By a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the coast at top speed. Okay. It sounded like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed our brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. Well, if I crashed the car while drunk, that's probably why I'm okay. Because drunk people often don't get as injured in things like car accidents or falling out of a plane. What we saw was a sight to behold. A beat-up police carriage containing you. Right there on the beach, you revved the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs. What did I say? The time hath come. What, what's, what's the time, though? So, naturally, being the curious cat I am, I asked what time hath come. Yeah. And you replied. Yeah. The time hath come for tequila sunset. The end of all things. I'm not going to say no Well, I won't. Uh, go ahead. I will say nothing. It's more dignified this way. Go ahead. Go ahead. After which, your reality contracted. You jammed the pedal, plowed right off the jetty, and through the ice. Your hands cramped on the steering wheel. We ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, yeah. covered in seaweed and shit, like some kind of sea monster. I thought that that phrase was going to be like, covered in seaweed and shit, like with and shit being like, and other stuff. But I think he actually means actual shit because he didn't say covered in seaweed and shit. He said covered in seaweed and shit, which makes me feel like it was actual shit. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. It was too late to get in there, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. Thank you, Five. Recognizing a brother in need, we offered our condolences and invited you to party with us, which you naturally agreed to. I'm sure I did. We asked about the whole tequila sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now and insisted that we all call you that from then on. Wait, so is Tequila Sunset an event or a name? I'm not sure. I think you were the event. Tequila Sunset. You know, as opposed to a Tequila Sunrise. Right. Which is long gone. Right, so my real name is Harry. No, that's just what your mother called you. Your real name is Tequila Sunset. Just embrace it, brother. Right, how long did we party for? Hours. It was an all-night drink of fun. Okay. Then, at some point, I think it was Sunday morning, you got belligerent and wanted to talk about Revacholian women. Okay. Did we fight? How they're beautiful and also whores and so on. Uh-huh. How one of them fucked you real bad. Yeah. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen, got up, and left without saying anything. Does not sound great. Wow. That's quite a story. Thanks, Kim. Yeah. I bet Tequila's a fucking legend around the precinct. You must be proud to work with him. If you only knew. Wow. Okay, uh, did I tell you anything about specific about this person that fucked me? You were pretty vague about it, but you kept saying you got fucked real hard, and that we've all been fucked, too. What does that mean? Please, don't open that. Okay. Okay. If no one's fucked me. I do the fucking around. I just got physically injured. It seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. If I had to guess, I'd say you're still working through some shit. As soon as the conversation's done, uh, did I? Did I mention losing anything else? Beside your gun and your badge. Yeah. You said something about your hope or oh. heart or something. To be honest, the details are a little hazy. Seems rough right now. In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage too. That's a big one. Okay, but did I say anything about the case though? Yeah, you said it was yeah. no biggie and that you'd solve it in no time. And that you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. 
That also sounds bad. A lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. Thanks, Kim. It's not meant as a joke. He's sorry for the hermit cop. Yeah. Uh. Did I say anything about my colleagues? You told us that they were a bunch of fucking losers whose main interest was cramping your style. Okay. It's more like you were cramping theirs. I know. No specifics, though. It was more about you that night. You were the star of the show. Did you get a read on what kind of a cop I was? You said being a cop was real boring and there was no reason to talk about it. You also kept pausing to knock the heel of your hand against your temple saying, boring, boring, boring. I am not a boring cop, I'm an art cop. Uh, did we talk about um, politics? Yeah, you kept talking about how the coal mine owners mm. were fucking us all over, just like that woman fucked you. Right. Okay. I agree with you, by the way. Uh huh. The spectral hand of the market makes sure everyone gets exactly what they deserve. Sure. I don't need to hear any more of this. It's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. Uh. You seem like you're characterized by your storytelling, ab storytelling ability. You want to tell me another one sometime? Whoop de do. So now I'm a fucking story. Right. Why not? Better than a beach bum. Conversation this game are really long. If I leave now, I can come back and hear more stories from him, right? Like, because I want to know how it became Idiot Doom Spiral. I really do. Uh, but I got to go. So actually, I heard enough story. I, but I do want to hear the other story later. So I'm going to come back. I do a. Uh, I can't save. Okay, but I, I want to hear this later. I'm going to go. Is what you almost say, but the words choke in your throat. Do you really want to miss out on all this good stuff? Perhaps it's significant. No, I wouldn't want that at all. Not at all. So you know what to say. Yeah, you look like someone with a lot of cool stories. Want to tell me how you became Idiot Doom Spiral? I don't want to lose a story. Depends, really. Are you willing to help me out? What do you need? Did you already forget our party? The thing I relayed to you earlier. So, have you got anything for good old idiot Doom Spiral? Yeah, I've got some Spiral Commodore. For a story. Yeah, yeah. Seems fair to me. Oh, wait, wait, wait. If I say I don't want to give you any alcohol, I'm not an enabler. That means I can come back, right? Right? In that case. I'm not a storyteller. Okay, good. I'll be seeing you. You too, Tequila Sunset. So, here's the thing. I can stay right here. I've got the alcohol. I can come back and get the story next week about why he is to the idiot Doom Spiral, which I feel like is good. Also, uh, I feel like we must have learn some things uh everything's great i should probably show him some stuff i can do that later uh we have to find the armored gloves we can do that look i feel like we are in a great spot uh go yeah so i'm feeling real good about our life and uh let's uh go and save And quit. So, everybody, that was amazing. We did so good. I'm so proud of us, by the way. So proud of us. So let's uh, let's do the rundown. My time is up. All right. So first off, I want to say thank you to everyone who was here. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Uh, it's very nice. I am... Hey, next Thursday, remind me that I want to do a giveaway because I've got I've got giveaway codes. Remind me. So uh, in about a half hour, I'm going to be watching Critical Role. And on my Discord, I've got a Discord. On my Discord, you can hang out with us and chat about it. Uh, it'll be fun. We It's a much nicer place than one with like 50,000 people. And then what? Then Saturday, which uh, Friday, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern on this channel. I will be 
uh, doing, uh, I'll be running the Gamblers, my Pirates Traveler, my Traveler Pirates of Dry Necks campaign. It's the penultimate episode. We've got two left in this season. Uh, they're probably going to talk to Professor and maybe go go do another, do another quick trip to Dragon's Dome, and then they're probably going to leave. They probably will not leave next week, this week, but maybe next week. We'll find out. Uh, but that's coming to hang out with us. Uh, that's the big RPG. And then on Saturday at noon, I'll be playing, uh, I'll be playing the the Rain World. But also, I'll like do a little bit of the if I if I can get some time in to practice, we'll maybe do a little bit of that modular synth. We'll check out my lunchbox. Sunday at eight p.m. will be Carousel Court session three over at Praxagor. This before his channel at eight p.m. Eastern, and then Monday will be Vampire the Masquerade at 8.30 p.m. Eastern over at Wandering DM's channel. We finally get to come back. Uh, so I get to be my humanity very low uh, vampire, which will be great. And then I actually am going to be doing one more RPG, which will be on the 12th, which I believe is the Tuesday. So Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern over at High Shelf Collective. I will be in a charity stream, a charity game. Uh, it'll be Monsters of the Week. So that is, and then of course back here next week for uh, more Disco Elysium. So that is my whole week for the next seven days. And my schedule will be up as normal. And I'm gonna go get food. And I wanna say thank you so much all of you for being awesome and being great and love forever. But I do need to go do a raid uh, to see if there's anybody uh, up and about. So we're going to go do a raid of Cypher of Tear. Give Cypher of Tear our uh, some love. No, no, I'm going to raid, but I'm going to raid and also get food. Going to raid. I'm going to raid, but I'm also going to get food. Don't worry about it. It'll be good. I, I swear I'm going to get food. I will not get too distracted. Um, and I, I swear, I swear. I swear, I will not get super distracted because I do have to get food. It's been a while. Uh, and all right, we're going to we're going to just do that uh, and uh, raid, raid and run, raid and run. We're going to do it. OK, and uh, we are going to do the raid. It's a special event. We're going to give some love. And uh, that's uh, that's that's us. So I want to say thank you so much. Um, take care of yourselves. We'll be awesome. I'm gonna get some kind of food. What kind of food, I don't know, but we'll find out. So, goodbye everybody. Take care of yourself, and I will catch you all on the flip side.